All right, take two. <laughs> Let's hope this is better now. I've been a good boy and restarted my programs one at a time this time, giving them time to do their initialization and stuff. Hopefully it should be better, <laughs> instead of starting up everything at the same time. <laughs> right. So yeah, uh, last time we were busy with making some signs. Yeah, this is normal. All right, now it looks normal. Okay, no idea why that was going on. All right, so we got, what do we got? We got, let's go in editor mode so I have some light. We've got automated ammo. Sort of. Michael Hendricks. Michael Hendricks automated. With chest fat uh, iron still. What we've got downstairs. Oh yeah, we were making signs. I remember something. I did not have enough iron to finish the red signs. We were making like 2000 science packs. And then we were going to deconstruct all of this. And put uh, bunches and bunches of labs around. To research some important technologies. Further down we've got nothing except some steel smelters and even further down we've got the power plant with water storage. Alright, so that is where we are at. <laughs> no more tech issues, now we'll just have biter issues hopefully from now on. We have managed to stay almost 40 minutes, the full 40 minutes we have on this world because this is a dwarf planet, it has very tiny resources. But it also has very tiny tiny and sparse biter nests, though evolution progress is the same. So we are starting to get into trouble now with these spitters mixing in. Because we don't really do that much damage to the medium biters. The gun turrets are distracted by the medium biters. And then the spitters can get their shots in. But still, not bad. We have something. The platform is defended. Like I said, we've got this nuclear reactor here. Which, if biters manage to get on the platform... <laughs> survived! <laughs> this is what will happen to my base. <laughs> that is a loss. We have declared this as a loss. This nuclear reactor has been on the platform since the beginning of the game. And it has been attracting biters. So that is what this playthrough kind of is about. We have been defending the platform honestly and contrary to my YouTube playthrough where I just leave this empty. The price is though now we now we get to use actually the, the platform. So we need to spend tons and tons of resources to defend it. But we also get to use the Warp teleporter. I don't have one on me right now. So we get to use this, including the, the extra bells it has. Which allows us to... Transform more resources into our base, as well as two more fluid pipes. So that will be a big difference compared to the YouTube playthrough where we only have the miners. The miners are actually the first things we want to unlock, probably. So then we can make those mining platforms. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, I feel. It's kind of going all through each other, my YouTube playthrough and this playthrough in my memory. So it's kind of hard to catch up where exactly we were. But I think we are ready to, to continue. What will you do when the research that goes in the center of the platform is unlocked? I think, let's actually try that out. I think what will happen is this will just despawn and the warp reactor will take its place. Did you know you can search in the list of technologies? Well, now you know. Uh, this is the one which disables the, or which spawn, this level spawns the physical warp reactor. All right, so now we have researched this. Indeed, my nuclear reactor has despawned and now we have the warp reactor here. We could do the same with this one, we could just check off the indestructible flag. Then we could also damage this guy. And I guess we can also superheat that with a, 
with one of those warponium fuel cells, which are some later game stuff. So now this this thing is the same, it will heat up, it probably will explode as well. But probably at this time we'll have a we'll have such a good defense that if it's breached we are we are lost anyway. So we'll see if it's still necessary to have that risk on there. But yeah. Does it also exp let's test it then. We'll just uh, go super speed. Alright, it is at a thousand degrees now. Um, give me my rocket launcher. I'll just grab these because oh, this is going to be slow as well. I have the button to speed up time. This thing has 5000 hit points though. Alright, let's see if this thing also explodes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, it works the same. This warp reactor also explodes. You can also actually set set these things to be not indestructible, and then they will start attacking those. <laughs> and once they are gone, you basically lose the ability to warp inside your platform. You, you don't get this back even if you warp out. Now if you warp away, the teleporter does not come back. So, we could enable that as well, later on, once the physical warp reactor has spawned. Alright, I guess that's enough introduction. Uh, most people who are planning to catch the stream from the beginning should be here. All 49 of you, welcome to the stream. So, yeah, I guess we're just gonna get going. The main goal for today is to get to flamethrowers, I think, and to get the to get an automated base set up. So all the different floors, sort of automated red and green signs and flamethrower defense on the platform to um, to lower the economic cost of all the, of killing biters basically. Now we need to spend two, um, two bullets per biter. Uh, with the flamethrowers, they can take over a bunch of the damage. Uh, lowering the cost of the ammo we need to spend to kill the biters. Plus it will also allow us to... Um, it will also allow us to... Uh, go further into the planet clock. Like I said, this is, this is a dwarf planet, so the biter pressure is not that high. But on a normal planet, once you get to 20% evolution, a lot of medium biters start to spawn and... We are getting into trouble. Right, so for the technology, I remember I was making 2000 science packs, so I probably had a reason for that. Th these mining platforms are probably on the list. I guess we want. What else do we want? That's a good question. I guess we want the. A larger factory floor, which requires electric energy distribution. Uh, some upgrade to the energy flow of that stuff. Of the warp teleporter, so we can use it to power miners or whatnot. I guess we want oil processing to prepare some oil storage. A bigger warp platform. We want a lot of things, man. <laughs> Alright, so what is the... Oh, we don't even have the mining production yet. That is going to be probably priority after we set up the mining platforms but what do we have we do have we do have steel furnaces researched at least and automation too so we do have the ability to make the proper furnaces for the smelting inside the platform yeah, yeah, I need 2,000 more iron for red signs. 
Uh, Alright, so the plan. The plan is, I will reload I will reload one more time. You'll first make those, uh, discover those mining platforms. We can set up the miners, we can set up the hallways with our steel furnaces. Uh, as soon as we've got 2000 iron, we'll go down here. Start up red signs again. We do have 1000 green signs prepared here. It is still going. We'll keep researching in these labs for now. Once all the science is produced, we'll get rid of those, build a proper lab setup, uh, and then we can research a whole bunch of red and green technologies while we while we set up these hallways, which will spawn in as soon as we research these first two technologies. The boiler floor is good. Actually, we need a coal storage on the boiler floor still, but for now we are good here. Yeah, I think the highest priority is to make some steel furnaces. Do I have stone bricks though? Did I have the foresight? Alright, we did mine stone bricks already. We have about 4 point something K stone bricks. That's good enough to make the furnaces we need. We probably need to smelt some more steel as well though. All right, let's collect those. 46. 46, yeah, we need 48 plus 12, 60 steel furnaces for sure. So another batch of iron smelting we need to do for sure. All right, I know what I need to do. Yeah, this is a different, uh, this is the polar opposite of the YouTube series where I cheese everything. That is the honest playthrough where we actually defend the platform or we die. All right, let's do it one more time just because it's the fun. This is what happens when biter, biters enter the platform. Alright. I know what I need to do. We can finally start this playthrough. Only wasted 22 minutes after 12 o'clock already. Let's go. I think we just immediately warp out. We don't have anything left over. Yeah, I have... 200 iron left, that's not a lot. Military science pack is researched. I guess we should start on these platforms. Let's do the right one first, because that's my iron platform, normally. I've got a new design for the mining platforms as well, compared to my YouTube playthrough. Alright, something is missing. It is not iron or copper or coal, so I can live with that. <laughs> uh, right, I guess we first, we still have only burner miners. I'm just gonna grab a bunch load of coal. Alright. <laughs> We're gonna set up as many iron miners as I can. Alright, I'm chopping, but I cannot insert it in my inventory. That is not good. It means wood is laying around everywhere. <laughs> the new sounds are funny, man. <laughs> Thanks for the subscription. I think that was the subscription sound. So I'm not watching the streams simultaneously because I had, had some FPS issues. So I don't get the notifications on my screen. Alright, I got a new method to insert the coal. We insert half a stack. We take out half a stack. So half of the half stack is taken out. Then we insert half a stack in the furnaces. And another half stack in the uh, burners. And that should uh, lead to like three quarters of a stack in, in here. Half a stack in here, which is approximately the right amount. I 
think we can maybe get away with another line on the iron. We do need more coal though. Let's use this uh, fancy teleporter. Make a little bit more gun turrets. All right. Thanks for the follow, I think. I already forgot which sound I selected for what, but I think that was the follower sound. Alright, so we are probably gonna get attacked from this side, which is kind of bad. Because I put all my gun turrets in this orientation. But we'll see if it leads to trouble or not. I've got that. I think I want to set up some on the coal as well. We haven't had a biter attack just yet, actually. Probably want to place these on the bottom. And we're also out of ammo, that is not good. That is actually really bad. Because now it's completely undefended. 14, that's not a lot. 13, that's also not a lot. Alright, it will be enough for the first little bit. So where are the biters, man? Five minutes already. Alright, I think we have the 2000 iron we need. I think I want to set up this guy at the coal, actually. Okay, let's stash all the inventory in grenades. So we have space to collect everything. Alright, so first up, we need... 2000 iron, uh, 2000 iron into gears. And then we can switch over to science again. Then we can cancel this. Yes, it fits in my inventory. That's good. And we can smelt some more steel. Don't quite have enough. All right, I have steel in my inventory, so I should be making furnaces as well. 46. So 14 more. So... 140 stone bricks. Let's keep that exactly in my inventory. Alright, so this is done. We can start off signs. And this can go back to green signs. And we can start off everything at roughly the same time. So that's gonna be another 15 minutes of science creation. before we can take down the 
um, the science production. And then we can set up more labs and automated lab feeding. Right, these are probably about to fill up. Right, I want to see it happen. Can I? Here comes the hallway. Alright, this is the first mining platform. Let's pick it up actually. We get another one on the left side once the next technology is complete. Um, right. Store the coal, store the coal, zap back. Let's properly empty this. <laughs> I like the new sounds. <laughs> Alright, we need uh, iron for ammo now, because we are out of ammo. The chests are empty, the iron here is empty. We don't have any ammo to... What the heck is going on though? We still haven't been attacked actually. Missing biters. Could the biters be missing? <laughs> that is a little bit lame though. I will check if the biters are missing. I don't know, that would be a little... A little bit too lame if you ask me. Let's uh, make a save. We'll we'll have a check. Um, no, biters, biters. Okay, there are biters. All right, but where the heck? Where are those things then, man? Look at the pollution. Let's uh, explore all the ex explore all the generated chunks so far. Did we really just get that lucky like with spawn or something? Right, it does look like now we are getting some biters. Alright, let's speed up the game. It speeds up the exploration as well. Alright, it does look like there is a normal amount of biters. We just kind of got lucky with the spawn area on this planet. Alright, so we are going to get the attacks. Evolution has been going like normal, so I guess we can continue. It would be a little bit lame if uh, <laughs> biters were the missing resource. I have never had that occur just yet, so... Let's repair this guy. Alright, so now we are producing ammo, which is good because we need that. We barely have anything in the gun turrets uh, out there. Alright, this is going basically as fast as possible. Uh, this is still going as well. See, 14 more furnaces. Okay, we can make all the furnaces now. First of all, we can upgrade these guys. That will make them smelt twice as fast and twice as coal efficient. How is the water situation? Water is good. We barely have a base. Nothing is really using power except the labs here and these couple cheap assemblers. 
so we're good on that I think I want to start setting up the mine eh, before setting up the furnace tech Okay, so am I ready for that? I need some belts, an underground belt, or two, some of these, some more belts, some power lines I have. Alright, fighters are coming, finally. And all the while I need to keep emptying all of these. coal we are actually quite fast on the coal okay we still have two full chests of copper so we don't really need copper just yet but i think it's the right location to try to set up the platform anyway all right i do have the miners all right so you can see the platform edge is over here i'm not going to use blueprints we just put it barely on the edge the first one here as well here as well here as well then we'll just start filling it in there's a pipe in the way here so we cannot place that one something like that one can be here now comes the fun part right we need an underground belt to bridge that so this is the same this is the, this is what you would expect belts feeding onto another belt now comes the fun part so in the youtube playthrough uh, you cannot put a belt here that is not on the platform that is a little bit annoying because you need to manually place those all the time or your miners will not work but one of the comments said why don't you just use a, an inserter to pick that off so that's what we're going to do now we need to use a long-handed inserter to pick this off the ground here actually we can already just power that i guess And you will see it in action. This inserter is on the platform and it will reach outside of the platform to pick up the ore. It is not fast enough yet. We need a stack size of two, but anyway, the mining production is not yet there either. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. But this is actually the full setup you need then. That is the. <laughs> mining platform here and if we pick that up all of the parts will warp inside except for the gun turrets but we do not have the gun turrets just yet all right then it is a little bit awkward to set up this hallway because this platform is going to grow this floor is going to grow so where should you place the the turrets Oh, the turrets. Where should you place the furnaces? Because if you place it too close by, they will just despawn when this platform grows. If you place it too far away, it's too far in the hallway. Well, on the first uh, growth, this pipe moves forward four tiles. One, two, three, four. So it will be over there. This loader, one, two, three, four. Over here. Uh, we will have uh, gun turrets on the platform. So I do not have gun turrets on me right now so that's also going to come forward one two three four tiles over here so technically we could place our defending gun turret here right now so this one will be on the platform later on this one is in our hallway and then we can start laying out the furnaces 24 pieces on each side with a little bit of space to put the power poles down I guess you could also do it um, with the power poles on underground pipes uh, on, on, with the power poles under the underground belts perhaps but I'm not going to I think uh, we, don't need, we don't really need to Right, so we're gonna have the input belt. It's gonna go like this. One, two, three, four. The loader will then connect to this tile later on. 
So that's going to be input. And we're going to have output. And we're going to have to do some uh, shenanigans in the middle here. Uh, I think we can get rid of the burner miners. That's probably the last warp zone we are going to use them. Now let's check the science. Probably, yeah, we should feed more inserters to... Uh, green science. We also should keep researching. I guess we're going to go with these. I need these medium electric poles for my um, for my setup, basically, in the hallways. And I guess... I guess we want the car as well. Hey, thanks for the subscription, man. It's good, I have, it's good I have different sounds now for the different functions. We want the car because now that we have the mining platforms, it pays off to place those further away from um, from the base so they don't get uh, as heavy attacks. You don't get heavy attacks on the mining platforms. It, w it won't really help to... Oh, I forgot I should be emptying out some stuff. Everything is full, everything has stopped producing, that is not good. Putting the mining platforms further away from the base won't have an effect on the amount of biters we need to kill at the base, since it, it doesn't matter if we kill them here or if they continue to here. But it will matter a lot for ease of defense, right? It's a lot easier to defend um, one location than four different locations. Alright, need to go back out here because... Out of ammo here, that's, that's exactly what I mean. These stairs are starting to run out. I need to keep an eye on multiple locations at once. So let's just insert a lot of bullets here. <laughs> Alright. Uh, thanks again. <laughs> uh, Red Bull or Red SDB Red. D8, I guess, for all the gifted subscriptions, but please don't start this again. I just want to play. And you know, just have a fun time. I think everybody already is subscribed by now, so... <laughs> Red 13. Ah, 13. Somehow I missed the... Yeah, X is 10, right? <laughs> V is 5. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, I'm being a bit slow. Looks like the... Looks like we can put a little bit more coal in the... And the burner miners. Alright, let's cancel. Whoa, that was close. Let's cancel this. gonna work really well.
I am starting to feel the pressure from the biters now. Probably I should not waste too much more time on this planet. I was hoping to get both mining platforms set up though. Uh, trains, I'm not sure we will see a lot of trains in this playthrough now. Because trains kind of require... <laughs> trains kind of require you to stay in a world, basically. Yeah, I promised the VOD channel indeed. Uh, I have been downloading all my streams yet. I haven't just gotten around to making the second channel and uploading all the videos just yet. <laughs> Alright, we've got five chests of coal. I guess it's kind of enough coal. Let's get the other platform set up. Now we can just copy this. Uh, I need to grab the second platform. I'm going to set up this in the next warp zone when I don't need to be outside all the time to see if my base is not blowing up. It takes quite a while to grab this. And we're getting to medium biters as well. I'm not sure I have time to set up all of this. I also, I do not have my underground belt, which I need. That is kind of a problem. Mm, this one, no, the other one. Yeah, I'm too, I should be getting out of here. Left one, right? Yeah, right. Left one, left. All right, now we can just easily fill that in. Alright, all the miners are working. <laughs> it is a second platform except for the underground belt. So I'm also just gonna grab this and I think we should be preparing to get out of here. Coal is full yet again. We have way too much coal and not enough of other stuff. Things are getting quite hectic now. I guess we'll first take down the coal mine. White attack group is coming. Eee. Oh, there's a medium biter in there as well. We'll lead those guys up here. Uh, it just takes a long time to get rid of all these uh, temporary miners. That problem soon will be solved though, but for now we're already almost getting into spitters that is not good fortunately this world has been quite forgiving on the amount of biters which came to ruin our day uh, just uh, storing some stuff in my handcrafting queue because it's never gonna fit all of it all right what a mess <laughs> It 
it is so much harder to, to play well while you're also talking and thinking about what you're trying to say, especially in a, in a second language. Okay, we, it is right about 25% evolution is when the spitters start to spawn. So I guess we are right in time deconstructing everything. And we can get out to the next warp zone. Whatever that will be. Now we can safely cancel all those handcrafts. Alright. Ready to warp out here. 15Z. Okay, I'll... Yeah, the, the, vod, the vod of Warptorio is still up on my Twitch page, but the Crastorio ones are have disappeared. I think the last one will disappear today. Yeah, later I need to... Uh, I need to put a belt on the side of the platform to balance it out, but we need uh, mining productivity 10 for that, and we are we only have mining productivity 3 so far. Probably I should be getting mining production first, actually, instead of going straight for the car. Yeah, the I, I agree. The sound of those, the, the factory sounds, they are a lot... Less obnoxious than the default uh, Twitch sounds for subscriptions and stuff. So that's uh, that's nice. <laughs> Alright. Let's warp. Uh, I realized I probably sounded a bit harsh when uh, when the subscription and the gifted subscriptions came in. I didn't I don't mean it like that in a negative way. <laughs> I just mean you don't need to do it, uh, especially you already gave a lot of subscriptions last stream as well. And uh, it's absolutely not necessary to do that every single time. So, but I st of course I still appreciate it. I'm still thankful for it because in the end this is what I'm trying to do for a living, you know. Streaming and YouTube and uh, making videos and stuff. So probably probably it's more a me problem than a you problem. Let's, let's just keep it at that. Alright, let's check out the mining platforms. I think we're just gonna go, we're still gonna go double iron. So I can place both of them on this nice juicy patch here. One, two, because the miners stick out two tiles. Let's do three, then I can walk in between. Alright, now we need to set up the hallways, but first of all, we are setting up the gun turrets here. I think we can be pretty certain that attacks are gonna come from the north here. So I probably do not need to do... What type of world is this actually? A loud metal clang. Haha, <laughs> this is an iron world. Okay, I kind of spoiled the ending of my next YouTube <laughs> video now. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get attacked from the side. Let's just place a couple ones here. We're definitely not gonna be attacked from the bottom. So this gives us a little bit of time to set up our hallways in peace. We can rely on that we won't succumb, suc, 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 <laughs> succumb, succumb to the pressure from the biters while we <laughs> up here, something like that. All right, let's let's get this done. Um, we also place a gun turret down here. For as long as the turrets are not yet on the platform. Alright, we need to do that shenanigans down here. Where we need to switch the output. So 12 furnaces output on the far side, those go on the inside. And then these have space to output on the far side as well, resulting in one full belt. That means... Okay, let me set up this uh, more definitively now. That means uh, we need to output 
here because obviously we can only input in these furnaces from this side and I guess then we're just gonna mirror the build to make it look nice around this central point right I do need some copper I guess that's easy to range I need to make these medium power lines. Alright, so we just can put those in between. Except at the last one. I guess we can just do that here. So we don't actually need this pipe. So the nice thing about playing Wartorio the intended way is we don't need to worry about these uh, about transporting water through this uh, smelting setup. We can just get it from the top of the platform through the wire platform itself. Okay, like this, I guess everything is, should be powered. At least it should be powered as soon as I connect it to here. I guess that'll do. It's a mixed belt at the moment, copper and iron, that's alright. Uh, we're gonna need some fasten sailors as well. I really should set up some copper wire. Actually, don't I have copper wire? Science is done as well, so we should. Okay, I have I have bunches of copper wire. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> messy, messy. Okay, let's first continue setting up at least one hallway. Because it's almost done. Then we'll set up the science snake. So, since we don't really need to transport water through here, I was water here anyway, still have a little bit. I guess we still want to do this though. And do the output priority for coal. And coal can still flow in here. I guess let's put chests where this is, so we have a belt here. And fast and sailors, that's gonna be our collection system. And I guess this belt, which can transfer coal as well, just gonna go like that. That looks alright. Alright, then we have automated resource intake. On the right side at least. For now it's mixed, that's alright. Don't really need to worry about that just yet. We do need to grab some coal. Alright. So that's at least one side. I can now copy this build and mirror it on the other side. So we can easy, more easily fill that in as well. I think now though we first go set up this sign snake. Since our 2000 signs, oh no, it is not done. Oops. Alright, we'll just leave this running then and we'll set up the sign snake on the other side. So basically... 
We need the labs. Where are the labs? We'll just sneak a belt past as many labs as we can. And we'll have two chests with both of the types of science packs. And I guess some fast inserters. To fill the belt. And just a bunch of... Yeah, this is not going to be a pretty setup. This is also just very, very temporary. Right. But at least it's going to be somewhat normally automated, as one would expect. We can fit a couple here. I guess we can fit a couple here as well. Just chain that together. Yeah, this is a very small floor. It's kind of hard to get everything in there. Alright, I guess we're going to go up here again. Uh, something like this. Grab signs, chain it to that side, why not? This one we can chain as well. <laughs> what, what a setup is this, man. Alright. Okay, for the rest we need to wait until... Until this science is done as well. 12 more science packs. Here's our automated science stuff. Oh, I missed a lot of chat again. Um. Yeah, like this it should be. Alright, now we can check out if everything is still okay above ground. We've got automobilism finished, though I didn't even start to make engines just yet. So that won't be all that useful. Alright, how many? I think I want to make 200 engines. We need only 8 for the car. I'm going to make 2 cars probably. Then a handful of those fluid pumps to more efficiently pump around water and later oil. And then we're going to want a lot of engines for flamethrower turrets, which is the goal um, over here. Those require five engines a pop as well. So we'll probably want want a multiple of four. So let's say 200 engines, 160 for flamethrowers. Then we have 16 for the car. We can make 24 pumps, something like that. We're going to need to smell a whole lot of whole lot of steel though. The ammo situation is still excellent, so we don't need to create more ammo at the moment. Probably we can... Um, I think we should first work on... And let's get ourselves an upgrade of the war platform. Perhaps we can double our gun turrets even. Uh, I don't know. Let's go factory floor first. Then we can build a normal red and green sign setup with uh, my trademark chest feeding system. That might be good. If only I remembered what I, what I need. Let's get some energy upgrades for this as well. Oil processing. Let's get that as well. I have the feeling I'm missing something important. Yeah, mining productivity. Yeah, that is that is what's important right now. Thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks, Danny. 
mining productivity is important. And because we are using that inserter to transfer the ore, we need the uh, inserter stack bonus. So it can pick up two ore at the same time or it won't be fast enough. So we get that and then we get the green levels of mining productivity. Alright, I guess that means we're going to need a lot more red signs than green signs since this is only red signs and these require two red signs to one green signs every time. So perhaps we are just going to make some more red signs in here. Now let's just do this in that case. Two more laps we can fit in here. Beautiful. I'll make a blueprint from this so you can use it in your own playthroughs. I'm sure you all cannot wait to plop down this beauty in your own game. Right, down here. Because mining productivity is not gonna do us any good if we are not uh, if we are not smelting the ore. The miners will be idle anyway. All right. Probably should start with the furnaces instead of here. Okay, let's see. We should be smelting a lot of steel. And actually, I am going to make a start with the engines because those will take a long time. We can fit this in here. 200 engines, that is... Um, iron gears. We also need a lot of pipes. So we do have a lot of pipes. I just make a bunch. And hope we don't have to handcraft anything else. Like this splitter. We have exactly one. We're out of bells. <laughs> Alright. Never mind. Let's quickly pop out. No big attacks on here just yet. Okay, I'm just going to explore this world. I just want... I'm not going to take advantage of anything. Just want to see the bite situation. It looks like again we got quite lucky. There's a nest, there's a nest. These have to go all the way around the lake. So yeah, actually pretty forgiving. I would say. So these... This was the last... This was the dwarf world, I guess. This was the last world. This was the world before, so yeah, we've been getting some pretty good worlds, I think. Sorry, those graphs were the ammo spendage. Just to clarify. Alright, we need two more long inserters. I guess we need a bunch load of bells as well. And we can start our engines. Those take like 10 seconds each, which means 20 seconds each in, the, in these assemblers, because they have speed a half only. Do we even have the steel? Yeah, we do. All right. Half a stack of steel, half a stack of gears, and a full stack of pipes. It's going to make the 200 engines. So that's our flamethrower needs sorted already, even though it will be a while before we can actually build them. Let's grab coal. And meanwhile we can make more iron gears here. This is sort of a strange way to multitask, right? You're multitasking but mostly you're only... Just when you encounter a situation you think, Oh yeah, I should have been doing that as well. Oh yeah, I should have been doing this as well. It's not really... <laughs> The most organized playthrough <laughs> I ever did.
All right, but once we have this guy set up, we are all set to start taking in two full belts of plates. And when we are mining iron on both sides, that is going to amount to 1,800 iron plates per minute. So that's a couple of 10,000 per warp zone we can uh, access. All right, and we have, of course, we are one belt short. I guess we could set up automated coal storage here as well. So that means we're going to have some chests feeding out Um, they have to feed out onto a belt. The belt has to join this belt. So we're gonna need at least two more splitters here. So something like this. And a belt has to come in here. So we can basically do this, I think. And then this, uh, yeah, this is the first location where a chest can be in that case. All right, this belt eventually needs to go like this over here. And this we need to join in with a splitter. Okay, that does not work so it has to be here all right input priority on whatever is coming in output priority to the boilers and this is just like buffer I guess something like that. Now we have a coal buffer system. 12% devolution, so that is still good. Okay, so obsolete burner miners, stone furnaces, I think. Uh, I guess we can throw wood in there as well. I think it's time to start transporting stuff downstairs. Still the attacks are not not that brutal here. 300, that's like a thousand magazines left over. Actually, we can probably make automated steel smelting. If we do this. And this, we got some extra space. For some chests, we can feed in. And output like this. And then we can just feed iron here. That we don't need to hand feed a hundred iron every time. We can just... Um, let's say half a chest. Half a chest, half a chest. Half a chest, half a chest. Alright, that is a whole lot of steel which is going to be smelted automatically. Yeah, I think it will pay off nicely. Let's try to get all the copper out of here. Alright, then we'll try to organize this base a little bit. How much iron do we have? Like barely a chest at the moment. Are fish obsolete? Oh, I just ate one. Oops. It's a bit dangerous to say that fish are obsolete. Let's let's keep them honest because as soon as I, I won't need them, but as soon as I put them away in this chest, I will need them. These are basically like medicates or like they heal you. Alright, I think uh, the water is out. 
no, we're out of coal. Right, we need to hurry up and get a move on. It is time to start transferring all that stuff from up here uh, downstairs. Just gonna take a couple trips. Let's just insert a full stack. I think we should upgrade these to steel chests. Uh, 12 chests is down there. Ah no, it's only 8. Ah, 12 on sale is alright. Never mind. <coughs> Grab more coal, that's all the coal. That is a fair amount of coal. Let's refuel all the furnaces. Mining production 7 is coming in. I'm still not uh, producing the extra... Red signs. 500 and only... Yeah, there's only 80 red signs remaining. So we definitely need to hurry up with that a little. Probably should have been connecting water as well. Can I still do that? Where is water? Water is down there. Oh, what a mess. How am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I had uh, thought this would go a whole lot more organized than what I'm currently pulling off. Is this done? This is done. We can start making red signs. I'm making blue assemblers for that. Okay, that is that. That is that. Okay, bricks. We have another chest of bricks, so stone. Iron. I'm gonna upgrade the steel chest for this as well. Two full chests of copper and a little bit. That's what we still have over, left over. No turrets out of ammo. Attacks are getting bigger. We are at medium biters now. But again, this world is pretty forgiving. Let's, let's see, uh, let's do this again. The pollution cloud has grown this far. Now we're actually starting to... Just at this moment, we are starting to trigger many biter nests at the same time. So probably attacks will ramp up quite suddenly and also with medium biters in there. It will probably start to come in after about a minute or so. I'll pretend I don't know that, so... Keep it a little bit fair. Alright. This is way too much red signs. I'm already too late. Labs are starting to run out. These are 50% faster than the Mark 1 assemblers. These Mark 2 assemblers. So that's good. I want to set up water because I'm out of water as well. Which means my base will soon start. Uh, stop to produce. That is convenient that this small water is so close by. Alright. This area has been cleaned up, finally. I no longer need to protect the nuclear reactor with chests, I don't think. 
If I start to run out of ammo though, it could go really, really fast. Alright, the medium biters are starting to mix in. Most of them are coming to the platform because they... This area is basically completely locked off, as we see now. So no biters are really attacking the warp uh, or the mining location. Only if they happen to part around this way. Like these guys. Alright. So just barely in time to start this back up. But still... Not too bad. Alright, we got our steel chests for here as well. I think I can afford to make these into steel chests as well. I mean, I'm not in a, I'm not in a hurry as much or at all, really, compared to my YouTube playthrough. I can afford to take things a little more slowly. Now I'm just gonna bring up some iron to make ammo. We're also gonna want fast inserters for that, or uh, fast assemblers for that. We probably want fast sub assemblers for everything. And right. At least we are producing ammo now. If we can speed up the production like this. So what is the right moment to get out now? Basically as soon as we start to get overpowered by the medium biters, which will be pretty soon. If we look at our magazine production right now, you can see we are starting to spend 120 magazines a minute. Like 500 iron a minute is being spent on killing biters at the moment but we are taking in let's say about 1500 iron although i think i should probably defend this side a bit better now all right so now it has a stack size of two and you can see these miners are basically working Working all the time. This uh, this guy can keep up. The ore is already backing up here. We are not quite yet at mining production ten, though. So we are not we are not at full power just yet. That is a lot of medium bikers, though. Yeah, I think we have to bail, man. We are we are going to get overrun pretty soon. So let's retract these underground and then we're gonna be warping out. So even these pieces will get picked up by those um, inserters. So we're gonna find some copper in the mix. Yeah, I think too. I think so too. We need to start researching some better ammo upgrades. It is time for that. Let me save. It is already warp zone 16. I did not save at all, apparently. So before we did not upgrade our ammo damage. Because we can already two-shot small biters, which were our main enemy. But now as we get further... You can see literal tons of medium biters coming in. And for those it will still have a big effect if we upgrade the ammo damage. So we won't kill small biters faster. They still take two bullets. But medium biters will take a lot more damage. Because at the moment they only take like three or four damage. 
something is missing. My favorite type of world and so is everybody's, I guess. But it looks like it may be like oil or uranium or something because we've got all four of the basic resources. Alright. So I picked up those things. Let's, let's, let me go grab my engines. Alright. And it is finally time to make ourselves a car. Nice. So warp zone 17, we finally got the car and the mining platforms. Now we can drive away from the platform to put up the mining platforms in a safe location. Safe-ish. We can also find some nice loot chests on the way if we're lucky. And that will make it a lot easier to deal with all the attacks. We've got biters close by on this world, like it should be, I guess. We've been a little bit too lucky, if you ask me, with the last two warp zones. Okay, there is too much forest on this side. Pump is missing. Oh no. I forgot to take the water pump, then die. That happens basically all the time. Cannot for the life of me remember to pick up that water pump. Okay, now we just uh, we are far enough out already from the pollution of the platform. We can place the miners out here if we find a patch like this one. just place some gun turrets around it and it will only draw a few biters and right i guess we can again set up both of them on this one maybe i will left don't really have a need for coal or copper just yet and we use way way more iron especially you normally already use way more iron than copper but now that is especially true with the all the requirements for ammo. I probably I think I will put my radar up here though. That will scan a little bit of terrain around us and also it will give me vision when I'm standing on the platform. I can see what is going on at my platform here. It costs a little bit of power, 300 uh, kilowatts. I think it's, uh, it's worth it. I'll put a couple gun turrets down here as well. I think the biters are not going to come through the forest here though. Yeah, you're right. We now need the additional belt for the right platform. So this one outputs on the top of the belt. And this one outputs on the bottom of the belt. So that means on this side there is 8 miners outputting on the bottom. And 8 miners outputting on the top. But here we've got 9 miners outputting on the top. And only seven on the bottom because the pipe is uh, is mirrored right it's not rotationally symmetric so we are going to make two inserters we're gonna just basically transfer a little bit of iron from the top side to the bottom side like so these two underground bells are not on the platform, so hopefully I'll remember to pick them up, but I probably won't even if you tell me in chat. <laughs> um, right. Mining productivity 10 is coming in. You can already see ore is backing up on both sides, on this side. So it looks like at 9 we are already pretty much there.
let's let's take a look at the furnaces. All of these are active, and these are almost all active, all the time. So yeah, we are at two belts of production now. That is uh, pretty nice. All the engines are done. I think we can start to think about upgrading all of our assemblers to the Mark II variant. We've got only one gun turret left over, a damaged one. Alright. So now we got way more red signs than green signs. It's alright though. 170. I do want to the uh, factory floor upgrade for sure. Because that allows me to build a real base, a normal base. And inst instead of this mess. So that's the green technology we want. And I do want the upgrade for the teleporter gate. The energy upgrade. So let's get that as well. So currently this thing transfers only 200 kilowatts of input. So that's basically like two miners worth of power. 200 kilowatts. With the new upgrade. It will increase the energy flow rate. Blah blah blah. We will have I think two megawatts. With a 20 megajoule buffer. Something like that. Alright, I said I could make 24 of those water pumps. And another car, and then we have 160 engines left over for flamethrowers. So let's go put that away. These are going to be for flamethrowers. Yeah, let's put them in here. Alright, let's check our situation. We're gonna upgrade this area with some of those pumps. Uh, we have the water intake. We're gonna pump water in this boiler system as well. Like so. And we're gonna place a pump here. What this does, basically water is going to flow in from whenever we connect it basically from the top. Into this storage tank. And then these two pumps, they force the water away from these storage tanks. This one forces it through the boilers, and this one forces it in this tank. So this will empty out, while this whole system, these 16 tanks, is just connected. So all the water will pool up down here, and there will always be maximum space in these tanks. As you can see, there's only 900 water in here, and there's like a couple thousand water in here. So that is my currently ultimate system. I'm gonna do a refuel lap for the furnaces. Right, we've got a bigger factory floor now. Okay, we got like, I guess 200 green signs remaining. What is something we really want to have? It may just be the damage upgrade for the turrets. Okay, my... My chat just disappeared from the phone. It is back now. I think we're gonna go with damage. So extra pipe and extra belt for all the logistics. We don't need it yet. We don't need this yet. We do want the bigger war platform if we want to employ flamethrowers. But for that we first need to make some military signs. So that's going to be a while. Oil processing. Again, we need space to store the oil. So that's going to probably... We're going to need to upgrade the war platform for that as well. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's going to be the damage. This does seem the most important and the most... Uh, 
what has the most effect at the moment. So let's do that. Okay, this is all done. I should not waste time on this. It will continue anyway. The question is though, what should I waste time on? Probably should go pick up my car. Because I do not want to forget my car. Alright, something seems off. Alright, this miner has run out of iron. That's why we are not producing a maximum belt here. Alright, so that that, <laughs> that that explains why that furnace was not working. Alright, still, this is good though. Alright, I was... Um, don't have space. <laughs> we were doing the furnace round. I forgot about it already. So with all furnaces full, I forgot the exact time, but it's something around 35 to 40 minutes, if I remember correct, how long a steel furnace can run on a stack of fuel. So we need to do that just about once per warp zone, and we'll be okay. Still four chests of coal remaining. 100k water, I guess we should connect, reconnect water again. Yeah, the closest water is here. Yeah, I think we can do that. Several hundred magazines still. Alright, I'm gonna grab myself this iron. I'm just gonna make ourselves some intermediates. I guess this is safe to do it like this. We're gonna need loads of gears and copper wire and stuff. Alright. That will speed up the handcrafting stuff by a lot. Meanwhile we can go set up the water. Should have been making some pipes instead, actually. I guess we turn again, since the biters are coming from there. I do not want those biters to be in the way. Small biters, they can't hurt you anymore. Once you have the heavy armor, they uh, don't do any damage, one damage. Why not use the teleporter for water? That is actually, that's actually pretty smart. <laughs> I guess I'm just not used to it be <laughs> because I've been doing it like this on my YouTube run where I cannot use the teleporter. So yeah, probably those are comments which should be coming in every now and then. I do not know if this attracts biters though, so here I do not really want to risk it. I have it connected now, so all right. Also gonna grab the copper wire uh, or some copper at least. The iron production is looking good though. We're gonna make ourselves some green circuits for personal use. Actually, let's let's just make ammo more. Because I need inventory space. Alright, 
Uh, I think as long as we have small biters, we can safely just build outside temporarily here. The gun turrets keep them at the maximum distance, approximately, even in the co in the corner. Yeah, I think we are good on that. Oh, I hope we have enough green signs. Let me just hand distribute some over here. Alright, once this is done we can deconstruct this entire floor and start the design of the final floor. This is looking nice, it is a lot easier without having to route the underground pipes through here. The water is actually going up, so that is good. We have about 700,000 units of water storage here. Not, we're not about to run out of coal. We probably should be mining some copper as well. Alright, so I'm going to limit these to like three stacks. Three stacks for every assembler. And then they will automatically stop working. And they can basically see as long as there's iron in this chest, ammo is good. And I have like a buffer of about 2000 rounds or 2000 magazines of ammo. Before I need to start worrying. First of all though... It is time for some green circuits, so we can actually handcraft uh, normally, at normal speed. Okay, what else do we want to make? Maybe a bunch of pipes. Uh, some iron sticks. I guess that's it. There are not all that many useful ingredients in uh, in vanilla factorio all right we have finished the damage upgrade I'll Press the button for once so that blinking light goes away. I never remember to do that in my videos. Alright, so with this with this stash of green circuits and iron gears, we are probably able to handcraft quickly whatever we need to build our factory floor. I'm going to I'm going to build up the factory floor in the next warp zone though because I want to do it at the beginning of a world where I can just puzzle around a little bit. We can just get rid of this. Let's mark everything for deconstruction. So the inserters don't start moving stuff around randomly. Alright, it is time for a real base. Only 17 warp zones in. <laughs> yeah, the game changes uh, a whole lot when you are actually defending the top platform. Okay, this thing is still pumping, that's good. More iron gears, and then we are probably good to go. I guess I have so much iron, I can just fill those chests up completely already.
All right, so I, I have less than a chest of copper. I want to get like two chests or so. So I want to mine copper in the next warp zone. Let's fill back up these chests for smelting steel. A little bit extra. Alright, we are smelting decent amounts of steel as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, let's, let's just fill those chests up to the maximum to minimize our risk. Alright. So that's like 12,000 iron ready to go into ammo. Now, it's, now the direct military threat has somewhat diminished i would say since we have a reliable ammo production on top of the war platform now now it's just a matter of economics what is the uh, the iron production and how much magazines are we spending we're only spending 60 magazines a minute so far but as you can see that line goes up and once medium biters uh, come in that line suddenly goes up by a lot right so there's small biters, small biters, small biters, and medium biters mix in. They take a lot more damage, a lot more magazines to kill. So it, that's why it's not really economically viable to stay longer in the warp zone just yet. It will change once we get flamethrowers, so I guess the next, the direct next goal is to set up this floor to make uh, red and green signs, because there's literal tons of red and green signs technologies to get to get to get through and after that the goal will be starting on military science we can uh, extend the time we have on each planet if we want to uh, we can very importantly one of the first things i want to get is uh, the upgrades for the mining platforms so we can actually place the gun turrets on the platforms as well and then those things will truly become uh, one click placements and one click deconstructs and we don't have to worry about building up gun turrets, taking down gun turrets. Uh, we can just plop them down and forget about them. That's a very important upgrade. As well as flamethrowers. So we're going to want a couple hundred of military signs. We'll get to that later. For now though... I mean, I technically I still could try to find a copper patch. There's a biter coming. <laughs> yeah, barely any attacks on these guys. There must be not a lot of biter nests around here. Let's again do the explore thing, why not? Alright, so... Obviously I won't go pick up any loot chests once I do the illegal exploration. The pollution cloud from the war platform is uh, pretty big. It starts to connect to my mining platforms. So if we would stay like 10-15 minutes longer, we would also see more attacks on here probably. But for now it's still uh, uh, safe. All the attacks are just coming in on, on the mining platform here. Okay, medium biters are going to be mixing in in just a couple minutes now. I guess I should just pick up my stuff here. Alright, one moment.
All right, let me quickly check chat then as well. Don't forget the car, yeah, don't forget the car. Did I forget the car? I forgot the car, didn't I? Yeah, still, I still forgot about the car. Well, for now we are still pretty safe because we have to, before we are warping out, we have to pick up the gun turrets anyway. Or we'll forget both the car and the gun turrets, that's possible too. Right. I want to pick up my inventory and just organize the iron in these chests a little bit. Just a little bit extra. Ah, oh, we already filled those. Okay, we still have bunches of iron left over. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of slow. <laughs> today that uh, that helps because no matter how slow I play production keeps uh, keeps going three over three steel chests of iron already yeah so I think next warp zone we can go uh, copper and iron and then the next one can be coal and iron to stash up coal in these chests for now we still have plenty of coal here as well Right, also the above ground chests are filled for ammo, these chests are filled for steel. We really have truly gargantuan amounts of stuff. Okay, where is my where is my inventory? My inventory does not even fit. Let's try to get rid of some. Pipes. Pipes always good. Probably 40 assemblers. Let's go with 50. Some are miners. I think laps we have enough. We're gonna need bunches of inserters. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then like a hundred of those. Maybe even more. I'm gonna need bunches of bells as well, I guess. Right, now we do... Nine damage on the gun turrets. So that's uh, a little better for the medium biters. They now take at least 5 damage per bullet, where before it was about 3. So they die just a little faster. Spitters have not yet started to mix in though. Right, I guess I'll just... I'll just quickly make some belts here, we do have the time for that. We also need we also need all those belts to make underground belts and splitters so it won't be too much even though we have a fairly tiny platform all right a couple hundred belts I think we are uh, ready to start retracting our turrets and bring back our platforms before warping out. I will take these down though. Because probably some damage is going to come in. We forgot to connect the power to the warp platform. Actually it doesn't work that way. The power just warps over from the boiler room. It doesn't actually flow through the different floors. So even though this is disconnected, it doesn't matter. Uh, this has the same 
power just warps over. It doesn't flow from floor to floor. So I can skip this connection and it, uh, it won't matter. All right, let's stop explaining and <laughs> let's go grab my... Um, turrets and my war platforms. Have to be a little bit careful that no massive amount of biters are coming to attack here. Yeah, we got pretty lucky with this spawn as well. No nearby nests, big forest to absorb pollution. I mean, oh, I thought my inventory was full, but thank you for the follow. <laughs> It's the same sound, which plays if your inventory is full. <laughs> Alright, we pick up one out here. And then the other one from indoors. Alright, so we have got our mining platforms back. And we are ready to set up red and green signs in the next warp zone. Whatever warp zone that may turn out to be. I want to get back my water pump if, if the biters let me. Alright. <laughs> Here come the next group already. Yeah. I think we are ready to warp out. This is warp zone 17. Okay, so that means by warp zone 18, we finally will have a normal base. <laughs> That's fun. And the underground belt. Rip underground belt. <laughs> rip raider. Yeah, probably rip raider as well. Where was it? It was over here. Yeah, raider, rip, underground belt, rip. Alright, here we go. I really like that it takes 30 seconds for the warp timer. It gives you some time to enjoy the final carnage of the planet just before you jump out. Alright, just another uncharted planet. Oh, look at that gun turret here. Yeah, it got uh, pretty close to being destroyed. Alright, so we first repair this, then we go out to place mining platforms. Or should I just place it at home? No, I think we're just going to go out. It also enables us to find some loot chests, if we are lucky. There can be some like red belts or red ammo in there, which is quite valuable, especially for military signs. We need red ammo. Those things cost like 14, a combined 14 iron and copper per piece. Alright, those patches are too close by, so I want to drive a little further. That's a chest. Is it worth going back for? Eh, not really. Oh, it looks like we're going that way maybe anyway. Then we'll pick it up. Just a couple of belts and some yellow magazines. Yeah, Uncharted has my starting settings, but I... I actually don't remember for sure, but I think I just started a default settings run. Right, another warp chest. Loot chest. Getting distracted already. Oh, this one has uh, some red magazines. It is just very hidden in the forest. These cliffs are horrible, man. There's water here as well. All 
All right, red ammo, not a lot because it's close by our spawn point. It looks like here is water as well because cliffs often uh, spawn next to water due to the like elevation, pseudo elevation mechanics. Again, low amounts probably. All bits help, but now we're already three minutes on this planet and I haven't done anything just yet. And I'm driving back to spawn. <laughs> so not great. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did play a default settings world. So those planets are the same, I guess. It was quite obvious. I learned it was a, it was your starting preferences in my practice run for the YouTube series, where I had a very distinctive starter map with no cliffs, no trees. Okay, I guess we're just gonna take this iron patch. No cliffs, no trees, and huge biter nests. That kind of tends to stand out. I think there is some worms here. No biter nests though. Just some hidden worms behind the trees. Snipers, little johnnies. Alright, here we have one underground belt. That should that's a crime. That is a crime. This should be an even number of underground bells, as same as these uh, underground pipes. <laughs> that is really annoying. <laughs> right, let's get on with it. Right harvester platform on this thing. Plop. And we just need to plop down some gun turrets. It's quite handy if one gets destroyed. I must say I also often just use a single underground belt or underground pipe just to make a build look a little bit nicer. Even though it has no function at all. Alright, at least we are mining iron. Now just let's find some copper. This is very close. Yeah, it's already... We may get some heavier attacks on there. I may have to reinforce that later. Okay, here is copper as well. Still pretty close by, but... Oh, there's another iron patch. We may just have to move that over then. There's no real method to how I set up my gun turrets. I just like to place them in a horizontal line. Because this motion is a lot easier than this motion for me. To insert the ammo and just to place everything. Horizontal I can do, but vertical always gets messed up. Alright, let's just drive a little loop around to see where the biters are. Some biters down there and to the left. Those are going to get polluted by the warp platform as well in this warp zone. Okay, now I thought a warp chest had spawned somewhere. Because it also makes that sound. <laughs> but again, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Alright. I don't want to do too much exploring just yet. Because the finds we can find in the loot chest are... Not that essential just yet. <laughs> okay, that was a loot chest and a follow, wasn't it? Some steel, some underground. I think we can... <laughs> Man, I shouldn't have used those sounds. I think we can snag that from the biters. <laughs> um... Okay, I'll just loop around and we can splash two of them. I think I'm gonna pick up that one and move it over there. This is just a little too close by. <laughs> Thanks everybody for the follow, I imagine. <laughs> I cannot imagine I'm finding that many loot chests. 
Okay, some extra time spent for this setting up. It's a little annoying. All right, stop following everybody. <laughs> I, have to, I will have to change that sound, man. <laughs> the bite is still hanging around here. They lost my scent. Once we upgrade the size of these platforms, I'll place gun turrets all around. But for now, I cannot be bothered. I think that has a... <laughs> thanks for the bits. That has a lot more effect though if you do it later in the warp zone, I guess. Although I must say, yeah, I, 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 I got surprised. I think what's going on, something got destroyed. Right, this is uh, yeah, this is already in the pollution cloud of the platform. This will be soon as well, but it it makes a significant difference as how further the pollution spreads out, the more chunks there are for the pollution to spread out to. So it gets slower and slower. The actual pollution spread on on the things we uh, don't want to be polluted. Oh yeah, the underground belt thing. I'm gonna lose another. All right. So that should fill this belt up as well. Damn, 10 minutes already are gone. That is not good. I had wanted to design this in peace. All right, we got 600 magazines. I think I'm gonna expand that because we're gonna need a lot more gun turrets. Not super soon, but also not very, very long from now. Alright, before we start designing, I will once more fill those. Um, fill those chests for the ammo making process since I just enlarged the the space for the ammo in here uh, too much stuff in my inventory exactly filled don't click anything just start designing furnaces 38 yeah actually uh, we need to refuel the furnaces or they will run out while we are designing especially the iron furnaces they are out of coal almost If this doesn't work out, I will probably just give up mining on a world just to design this floor. Right, so I have a really nice blueprint for this, uh, which I used in my uh, YouTube playthrough. But now we're just going to do that. Now we're just going to design it without a blueprint and see. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I didn't buy it. Okay, I bought it. A I buy it a little bit every time. I cannot help myself. All right. Oh, that was well timed. I thought uh, my inventory again was full. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> All right. So how I would do it is I would start off uh, the reverse way, I guess. Just uh, fill one side with labs, fill other side with science production. Only gonna have one belt down the middle because I only intend to do it with red and green signs here. So that would mean something like this. Uh, 
and power. I guess we can connect it to here for now. Alright, so this is power. That means science will have to come from over here. So, 10 of these guys fit in a line. So, I guess we'll also do like 10 assemblers here for uh, red signs. And then 10 assemblers for green signs. Just to see how much we can get away with. I think I used less in my playthrough, but perhaps we can get away with this many. Then we need... Um, basically we have only then this space... <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> subscription. I love that sound, man. That is a really good sound for the <laughs> subscription. Alright, so I kind of want to set up my red and green assemblers over here. So that means uh, bells and inserters and iron gears. There's a lot of, to fit in here because the inserters require um, green circuits and iron gears. And the green circuits require copper wire and so on and so on. I want to have like a personal assembly area up here where I can make whatever I want and this area I want to generally re keep free if I can. Uh, some chests, some 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 stuff which uh, which I need to do later in the playthrough. I just need a little bit of free space to be flexible. So I'm gonna try to fit it all in here. I already think but this is not going to fit, is it? We're also going to need an input belt and an output belt. So we need to move that over. Okay, yeah, that's not going to fit at all. Okay, there is no chance then I can get this many science things in here. So we have an output belt, this one. And two input belts. So yeah, no, I guess uh, I guess we're gonna make the iron gears for red signs over here. Uh, feed it from a chest. Let's make steel chests. So we feed in iron and we output it on a belt, and then we output copper on a belt. That is red signs. All right. So we need. One gear and one copper for red signs, which means two iron plates and one copper plate. So if we have a full chest of iron, we should have a half chest of copper. And that should balance out red signs. Now the more difficult part. So what if... What if this was belts, right? And I would output it over here. Would it go on the top or the bottom of the belt? I guess we can just do this and see what happens. Okay, that goes on the top of the belt. That means we need to output inserters on the bottom of the belt. So that could be like that. Though it's gonna be pretty hard to feed in all the ingredients for inserters from this location. We also need iron gears for belts, so that is gonna be like that. We can have a chest over here, which this is all iron. It's iron plates and then iron plates for iron gears. So this can just be one chest dedicated to belts. We won't let inserters pick from that. Yeah, I think inserters here is not going to fit. What if this was... What if this was iron gears? This was inserters. Then we have green chips and copper wire. Copper wire feeds green chips, feeds inserters. We have a chest of iron to feed that as well. Perhaps we should flip that around. We could do this. Green circuits and then copper wire over here. 
we can have two of these. Uh, that goes in here then. We will need a chest to feed copper to copper wire and a chest to feed iron to green circuits. This one is fed already. Um, we need to feed iron to inserters as well. And these gears need to be fed to inserters. And we need to feed uh, iron to these gears. Now I do know that uh, this thing can be pretty much in the way to walk around here. So I think what I want to do is I want to flip this around. I'll place it over here. Then we have this area free to walk. Uh, will, the f will that be fast enough though? Can I just move this down as well? I don't think I can. I think I'll just leave this like this. Oh no. Can I do this? I cannot move this down anyway. Now let's just leave this like this. We have this area free, that should be good enough. It, we do need a chest though. Uh, that's gonna be a bit tight. Oh, the, the chest is gonna block me. Oh, I cannot do this because I still need to output the inserters as well. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with it then. Alright, so this could be connected like that. It still outputs on the bottom of the belt. This still outputs on the top of the belt. Okay, then we have the chest here. I think we're done then. I think that is all. We just need some more medium power lines. To power this because... There's just no way for small power lines to reach all of that. So I guess one, two. That powers all of that. This powers all of that. Alright, we're still not at 20% evolution. This is the real danger of Warptorio. You're here in your calm, serene underground base. While up here things are going to hell and you don't even notice until it's too late. And it probably will be too late when ammo runs out, usually. If ammo runs out, then you're overwhelmed in seconds, basically. Like 30 seconds and your base is gone and there's no recovery. So just as a single bite destroying a turret, it's not so much a problem. But if you run out of ammo, everything goes to heck really quick. Alright, but we're still good. Under medium biters, no real danger. Let's try to finish this build. So then we're gonna have 9 red and 9 green. Which is alright because Warptorio has those technologies... Uh, bunches of them which require more red than green signs so it's okay to overproduce red signs a little bit because red signs takes only five seconds as opposed to green signs six seconds so we'll, pro we'll be producing red signs a little faster all right uh, before let's figure out the amounts for this as well so this is going to make 2400 red signs, so we want to make 2400 green signs as well if we can. Which means we need 2400 transport belts and 2400 inserters. So we need 2400 iron plates directly for inserters, so this chest is going to go on 2400 as well. We also need 2400 green circuits and 2400 iron gears for inserters, so this is going to be a full chest as well of iron. Uh, all right, then 2400 circuits means 2400 iron for circuits. And since every circuit requires one and a half copper plate, three copper cable, and this makes two copper cable from one plate, that means we need not 24, but 36. And same for here, 
Uh, we get two belts from three iron. So to get 2400 we need basically 3600 iron. So 24, 36. And that should be the uh, correct ratio of all the different stuff. Alright, let's, let's fill everything up. And just see how much it takes. I think, if I remember correctly... If I fill up all these iron chests with resources, that should exactly match those chests. So let's try that out. I should by now have collected enough plates of all the different types. So only two chests of copper are needed. Okay, we grab all the iron out of there. Uh. <laughs> okay. Sorry about this, this is always a bit annoying. Just want to see how much copper we already have. Approximately three chests, right? Yeah, approximately three chests. Iron we have much more. Alright, so this theoretically should fill up everything. I didn't calculate this, this is just from sort of knowledge. So let's try, start with copper. 6000 copper. And we should have 4800 in here. Oh, sorry, 2400 in here and 3600 in here. That is 6000. Then we need to match that with 18,000 iron. Two full inventories of 9000. One for this iron gear chest. One for this iron gear chest. And then the rest, 2400 for inserters, 2400 for electronic circuits for inserters, and then 3600 for bells. And that is going to make 2400 red and green signs combined. So, nice, I guess. <laughs> Can we already fill that up a second time? I mean, I cannot distribute that, but yeah, we can. Okay, I'm that slow, huh? Uh, that was a little bit out of expectation. How is it going on top? Okay, still fine. We are about to enter... I didn't put radars here this time. We are about to enter medium... Are we? Uh, spitters. Medium biters already are well represented by this point. They start to approach. Magazines. Yeah, we are consuming 160 magazines a minute already. A full yellow belt of iron can make 225 magazines a minute, so we're already eating up all of our iron to kill biters, basically. I think it's time to warp out and we'll start this thing off in the next warp zone. Then we can also uh, just look at it normally. And that is the 6000 copper. Okay, so this is another 2400 signs ready to go. So we're definitely going to be mining iron and coal next warp zone. So now we are starting to be out of coal. Alright. I think I have if I have two and a half chests of copper, I can do another two refillings. So I will have enough copper for a long, long time, I think. Okay, we are getting damaged. I think it is time to go retract these uh, platforms be before things spiral out of control. Alright, here already two. I d didn't take my inventory. That is bad. No, oh, that is also bad. Come to me, come to me. Yeah, bite me. Alright. Okay, we need to be quick. 
This is why the gun turret is here. If now a biter comes on the platform, at least we have some defense on the ground to bring him back. Yeah, I do want to grab my inventory though. Alright, there goes the first gun turret. Not over here though. Okay, we have barely been attacked at uh, this location. Uh, okay, we've barely been attacked, but here they come. Alright. Let's get out. We do not need to reclaim the four belts anymore. The mining platform design has been improved. And it now features these long-handed inserters, which can pick up the ore which uh, is outside of the platform. A suggestion from the comments. Okay, still turrets are getting destroyed. This is not good. Okay, um, let's save and warp out because things are going to... We're getting overrun really, really fast now. Alright, I guess we'll survive another 15 seconds. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is working well though. Oh, they get some serious damage in though. This world reminds us of home. We don't get any interesting type of planets uh, really so far yet. Um, okay, I only have the left harvester for some reason. I think I'll just quickly set this up on the coal. And we'll move it soon. Anyway, we need to pay all the the costs for killing biters still with yellow ammo. We don't have flamethrowers just yet. So perhaps it's a waste of time to drive out just yet. It is hard to keep an eye on all the stuff though. Yeah, if you compare that last warp zone we spent 10 minutes to set up our mining platforms. Now it's going to be done in like 2 or 3 minutes. Alright, that may fit not very nicely. We can actually just mix mine. It's a little copper. I think we'll do that. We have a lot of... Yeah, let's, let's do that. Just a little bit of mix mining. That's the benefit of doing chest feeding. You don't need to worry if the wrong resource goes on the wrong belt. I will try to defend chest feeding any way I can, man. <laughs> uh, logical or not logical, I will just blurt out reasons to do it anyway. How much ammo was used at the end? Yeah, I want to know that as well. So let's save this as 19A. And we'll just load 18Z. I want to quickly check out how much magazines we were spending. <laughs> 290 a minute. Uh, one minute. Yeah, so this is more. This is more ammo per minute than a yellow belt of iron can supply. And it's definitely more than four assemblers can keep up crafting. I think our maximum crafting speed is 180 ammo per minute. And a yellow belt of iron brings in 225 magazines worth of ammo. So yeah, we are definitely past that threshold already. So we are about, this is uh, the economic warp, even if you are not 
even if your gun turrets are holding up, you, st you still should warp out. Because it's costing you more iron to stay on the planet than you physically can mine. You're basically losing iron by staying. So this is definitely the highest peak we have had so far on this warp zone. But perhaps it's because I'm staying longer now. Alright, let's go back to, to the new warp zone. Alright, we do have some oil here actually. I'm not ready for oil though. Not ready for oil. Alright, so how is this gonna work? It's just gonna grab whatever type of ore it has. If that is not available and it empties out, it will grab the new type of ore. So that is just gonna be fine. We do need to place that underground belt again though. Alright. So, miner setup and fed with ammo. Not too much, but I guess it's enough to set up this stuff. We still need to set up the inserters and stuff, actually. Let's just go ahead, output from the middle. And we need some inputs. I guess we'll take from here. Alright, and then we can have a fun little look. Let's also do the science buffer chest thing. So, I'll put red signs on the bottom, buffer all the signs in here. And um, I guess, I guess we have to do it like this, right? So if red, green science comes in, it goes straight, gets outputted here, stays on the top. Red science should go to the bottom and stay on the bottom. Yeah, it does, all right. So now we can do this. The labs will fill up with our remaining signs from our temporary build. Now we can power up this. Let's save here that 19A. And science production should start. But it is looking like everything is going on here. We have the stack size 2 already, so this inserter is fast enough to keep up. The only thing which we don't have is a fast enough copper wire assembler, because normally you need one and a half copper wire assembler to keep up with, uh, to make electronic circuits non-stop. We can kind of get around that by just feeding this one some copper wire and taking out one stack over here. So that will make this inserter, this will, it's like, it's almost like this is another copper wire assembler in some sort of way. And now this thing is working non-stop. But it only will do so once for as long as we have copper wire in here. I think we can maybe perhaps make a different chest. Let's put an iron chest there to see the difference. And we can just put that in here. So for every stack of 200 wires we put in here, we will take out one stack of copper to keep it kind of balanced-ish. Alright, now my temporary, or my my personal assembly area. I guess we can do something like this. Three more over here. Uh, I guess we can place two more over here. So I should be careful. This is hazard concrete. If you research upgrades to the platform, 
uh, these things can move and they will despawn whatever is on here. So these assemblers will despawn, basically. Alright, that looks pretty neat. Let's see how close this is to my blueprint, which I used in the playthrough. So I guess the slabs and the signs are similar. Basically the temporary area and the setup down here is a bit different. So yeah, the rest is uh, fairly similar. I did have the, the pipe to block the entrance because in my YouTube playthrough I absolutely should not walk outside after a certain point or I'll instantly die. But yeah, the rest looks pretty similar I guess. I think we'll just start off making a bunch of copper wire and we'll just stash that in one of these chests. So that um, so that green signs can keep up. Because now inserters are starting to back up on the belt because this thing is running all the time or it was running all the time. It's already gone. So we need more copper wire basically. Right, but that is everything we have. We have our red and green science base. I probably should start off researching more lab speed. Because we have only 20 labs in here. Either that or I should research the... The size upgrade for the factory floor, if I can even find it. That requires oil processing and salt. It's also not too far away actually. This, uh, this guy allows us to build 40 laps in here. I think we'll just go with lap speed first. I want to go advanced electronics uh, first. Because that is on the way to expand the mining platforms. That's going to be... This is a casual playthrough, man. I can, I can make it life easy for myself. And what I mean by that is I want those those upgrades for the mining platform as soon as possible which means researching advanced electronics which is red chips so let it go oil processing we need that for flamethrowers anyway plastics and advanced electronics so we can find red chips in loot chests and we can make some modules for the war beacon later on and then another level of mining productivity which is not really that useful and then we can get the upgrades to those platforms once we have military signs. So I guess we're working on military signs next. If this is our goal. Okay, let's first go through the text. Do we need anything else before going for military signs? I guess a landfill is also possible to find in chests. And some loot chests spawn on the water. So it could be useful to have landfill uh, a larger boiler floor allows us to store more water which is probably the current bottleneck which runs out the quickest once it's filled up um, circuit network i do not want to research because uh, red and green wire also get added to loot chest tables so that basically dilutes the table further i don't think it gives you additional loot it just like adds it to the table and decreases the chance of other good loot spawning so i do not want to research that just yet um more x speed i don't think i need it just yet we can get more damage on the bullets that is a good thing to get probably probably even before landfill for sure before upgrading the boiler floor for sure So yeah, reordering text in uh, Factorio is a little bit annoying, but doable still. I think we can also finally research the uh, weapon shooting speed. That will help. You saw in the end we got overrun by big biters. With a little bit of extra shooting speed, we can hold them off just a little bit more. Yeah, not... Not convinced about the second level though. Okay, then we'll go oil processing and towards military science. We will need a bunch of time anyway to make the military science. So...
Okay, let's put five stacks. One, two, three, four. Okay, four stacks. Five stacks. All right. That should keep everything running at full speed. All right, so. Still have plenty of green chips and iron gears left over for personal use as well, so that is good. I guess we can. Let's make a we'll need it later chest. Just hide a little bit of stuff because our inventory is full all the time. Let's get back up to 40 of those. Forty of those, and put away some of the inserters. Okay, we'll need red belts later. I will keep the two cars on me because if I don't, I will explode my car somewhere very, very, very far from home. That's a safeguard. If you have it on you, it won't happen. But as soon as you put it away. <laughs> Uh, things will go down the drain really quick. Let's make some more medium power lines. How is the assemblers? We still have a couple. Do we need more? We may be needing more. We're out of steel. The, yeah, once we get uh, to the next last stage of the base, we need a lot more assemblers. Alright. And I guess we don't need all of these bells just yet. Okay, so let's see how the coal system is going. Coal storage is going decently well. Alright, four chests are full. Okay, this water is this part of the water tanks has run out. This is still all the way full. So not too much copper is coming in down there, that's alright. How is the iron? We do have two chests of iron or so. Steel is about to run out, I think. We may have enough steel for the moment. That's a good amount of steel already. Flamethrowers are quite steel hungry though. 30 steel a pop. Right, so this is enough for two more sets of science. Will take a while though before this is all finished. So let's see how ammo is. Should we smelt more steel or make more ammo? That is full. Okay, I think we have enough ammo. I think we are gonna make some gun turrets. To prepare for actually no let's make let's go make military signs right so how much do i want to make military signs i do want those two uh, upgrades the east one and the west one that's two times 200 is 400 we do need this technology which increases some sort of floor space which i'll need to before i want to i want to have this before i rebuild my factory to automatically produce military signs so that means i have to do this by hand before as well so that's 600 and then of course we want uh, the flamethrower uh, behind flammables that's another 50 so that's 650 we easily can get this one as well it is already available so that means 700 this thing is hidden behind rocketry so that goes to this would be 870. I think that's 
that's getting beyond the scope a bit. How many walls can we actually even make? Eight hundred and twenty-six. Okay, I think then we're just gonna make seven hundred science packs. So those three technologies, uh, those two upgrade the platforms, the factory floor space is six hundred flamethrowers, and the ten minute increase. That's seven hundred. All right. So what I like to do then. Put away some of this iron. Some of this copper wire. Actually, all of this copper wire. Alright. So, what do we need for military science? Three ingredients, red ammo, grenades and walls. Um, you get two military science packs for each single grenade and red ammo, but you do need two walls. So for 700 military science we need 700 walls. That's good, we could make about 800 from this. So we will need 350... Right, we will need 350 red magazines and 350 grenades. So I could just grab a bunch of these. Fifty a pop. Then we need 350 steel. Yeah, I barely found... I didn't actually find a lot of red ammo, did I? We do have plenty of steel though, so we don't need to worry that we are too poor to pull this off. And then we just need bunch loads of copper to get it started. Okay, we don't have that many bunch loads, but I guess... <laughs> it's gonna be fine. And for grenades, we're gonna need bunch loads of coal. Alright, so if we want to make... Okay, let's get one more in here. Let's say we make 400 grenades, because... It wouldn't be bad to have some myself as well. So 350 for science, 50 for myself. 100 per assembler. 100 grenades per assembler is 1000 coal and 500 iron plates. So 1,000 coal is going to be uh, this much. So we need an inventory full of coal, basically. Approximately. Which we easily have. Okay, then we can unlock these chests again. Then we just need to add five stacks of iron. And that is 100 grenades per assembler, so 400 in total. And do the second filling of these. All right. Bring back the cool. Yeah, this is why this assembler here is in the way. I think I dealt with that in my carefully planned blueprint. This walking space that it would be free. Did I? Or am I talking? Yeah, you see? Well, actually I did. I did build the inserter. Ah, I used a long-handed one. Okay. <laughs> right, so this space is free to walk in my YouTube playthrough, so... Unfortunately, here we're going to have a lot of this annoying stuff, where I just keep zapping in and out. I do edit it out in my YouTube page as well, if I zap, 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 zap around. <laughs> I just make it look like a single zap. But, yeah. I should refill water at some point. 
I guess, yes. But I think we can still run on this water for a little bit longer. We will get the upgrade for the boiler floor, which means we can store a lot more water. So we'll do that in the next warp zone, I imagine. We can probably fit like 20 more tanks or so. That will be a big increase. So perhaps I should be making some. In anticipation of that. Alright, I got distracted. I need to start making grenades. Alright. And then it's just the walls. Final pass of copper over here. That is going to be all the red ammo we need. Okay, I wonder if my... I didn't put too much ammo in here, so... Let's go... Reinforce this just a little. There don't seem to be coming many attacks from this side though, so that is good. Once these guys are on the platform, we can just easily insert like 25 or 50 ammo per gun turret by doing the quarter or one eight stacking thing. <laughs> and we don't have to micromanage that all the time. Okay, here we got some more attacks it looks like. Yeah, I think it's still alright to mine at home. Although, once the medium biters start kicking in... Once the medium biters start kicking in, this is just not enough DPS to get rid of all of them. And especially if they come from the side with only one gun turret initially being in range, that is quite bad. So if we mine at home, we cannot stay as long on the warp zone. But on the other hand, we don't lose as much time to set up in the beginning. And we don't spend the... We don't spend the last little bit of the curve of ammo. So I guess it's, it's better to mine at home still. Until we have flamethrowers set up at least. Because once we have flamethrowers set up on the home base, those will take care of a lot of the damage, saving a lot of ammo. And all the biters which attack the platforms can also just... They won't go to the platforms if they are far away, they will continue to here. And also get massacred by the flamethrowers. So that's going to save us a lot of ammo in a little bit of time. At least that's the plan. <laughs> I hope. Right. Okay, so these grenades are gonna take a while. Um, six hundred. I guess, yeah, let's just go with, uh, uh... Let's go six assemblers, why not? I don't have the grenade assemblers to keep up with that, though. Yeah... Uh, let's go six anyway. 50, 50, 50... 100... That is idle now. Still need to make the walls actually. So I need 700 walls. I do like to make like a couple science packs extra by hand so I don't need to consume every last single drop of science. So let's do that and now we'll make 700 walls. Right. Achievement, first military science pack. Right, that should be, yeah, 700 walls. I guess I just can... Really sneaky, just pop outside for a little. And we just quickly mass produce these walls in here, because...
hand crafting 700 walls would take like 6 minutes. Alright. And with 15 assemblers it goes pretty fast. Alright, that's the full 700 walls done. And our four extra science packs are here. A little bit of extra ammo for ourselves. Right, we are done with the military science. Probably already before we can even research that stuff. So now we are needing to get through some pretty expensive... Technologies, 200 for plastics, 200 for advanced circuits, 250 for mining productivity, that's gonna take forever, that's the first 60 second technology we encounter here. And only then can we get to the uh, platform upgrades. Alright, I guess let's just try to start it off. I have an awkward number of grenades, so sorry about this, but... That is the first 15 or so. so I could do 25. Oh, I could have done 25. Alright, uh, actually we need to insert the walls as well. And we need seven of these guys. Or 700 signs. Yeah, okay. Right. Bad planning. And even worse execution. Alright, one personal grenade left over. <laughs> okay, a little bit more. To get ourselves out of a pickle. We are at 23% evolution already. I do not have radar set up. I feel I should not be pushing my luck on this planet because I am mining at home. They are getting close already. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna chicken out in this warp zone. Military science is producing. We are on the way to plastics. How is it going with the science chests? Alright, we are like three quarters through the stash of products. Alright, everything is busy. This is why I wanted to keep this area free for myself. I mean, it is not really free. I'm already stuck between this chest. I cannot move out of here. I just close off this area. Now I cannot walk in there at all. Oh, I can. Never mind then. Why can I not walk? Okay, sometimes I can walk through there and sometimes I cannot. Alright, good to know. Alright. Um. So what else do we need for flamethrowers? I know flamethrowers require a lot of pipes, a lot of gears, some engines and steel. Basically we have everything we need for flamethrowers already, except for the oil. So let's make a stack of pump jacks. Okay, my furnaces have run out of fuel. That is bad. S stuff starts to get destroyed. <laughs> that was a good moment for it. Stuff starts to get destroyed, I was going to say. <laughs> I didn't see the icon down here though. <laughs> Man. 
All right, yeah, uh, we need to get out of here before I do anything else. Let's just get out of here. I'm just doing too much. Oh, that's probably the wrong side to deconstruct first. Oh, the next group is coming. Come on, come on. Ah, this is so slow. Come on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the retracting the miners indoors is a lot more dangerous, though, when you're mining at home. Luckily, this one does not seem to be so much in the path of danger. But the iron miner definitely was. Okay. Let's hope those guys part around here. That helpful cliff is pushing them up. Oh no, they come here. That's not good. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright. The miner is damaged, but not destroyed. Forty-one hit points remaining, alright, not too bad. Okay. Let's go up. And I think it is time to go to warp zone 20 after this one. We're still on warp zone 19, so this is safe 19z. Past 1k follow. Okay, let me... Let's push warp and I can quickly read a little bit of chat. Read past 1k followers. Nice. <laughs> 169 viewers. <laughs> nice. Where all these people come from? Where, are, where is everybody coming from, man? But yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in. Why not play with squeak through mod? Refill water. Right, where are we? Okay, we are on another dwarf planet. Probably we can make it all the way to the end of this one. Now we can take advantage of the dwarf planet mechanics, I guess. We have a car. We can go loot chest hunting and hope to find those red chips and loot chests on this planet. It's a good planet for that. It's a good timing. Let's save. 28 dwarf planet. Unfortunately, we spawned on top of the copper here. And the iron seems to be stuck in a cliff, so we cannot really place the platform on that either. We will have to go out to get resources. Let's first hook up water though. I forgot my pump. Oh no, I, I still have my pump. I don't play with squeak through mod or even distribution because it uh, gives you a significant advantage in the speed at which you can do things. Which especially is a little bit odd if you're doing a, a timed challenge, right? If you're doing something... Uh, which is a timed challenge. You should not really use stuff which saves you time and then claim you can beat the challenge. Alright, so let's see how many of these bad boys we can place. I guess we can place quite a few actually. Way more than I thought. Yeah, we can just connect this as well. Um, yeah, we're gonna need even more. I have four, five, six. There's a one, two. I need to make seven more.
I lurk behind tall objects here for the bad ones. Yeah, yeah, squeak true does not apply only to you. It basically lowers the size of the hitbox on uh, on everything, which means biters can also squeak through. That is absolutely correct. Right, I think this is a faster way to transfer the water. So we'll see. But this is a lot of storage. Now we have. 55 tanks in here every four tanks is 100k so it's over a million like 1.3 ish million water storage uh, twice as much as we had before so that's pretty good all of the coal chests are full okay it's time to at least feed this so all this iron can go away I'll grab one more of this platform here. I probably should just place this one here as well, on the inside. So I don't end up with all that ore in my inventory all the time. Okay, we are on the very slow technology now, mining productivity. So I'm picking up two of these, because if you, you don't need to pick those up yourself to, uh, to war back. So I will have one extra in my inventory. I won't need to come pick them up again. Okay, I don't have enough coal. Uh. This uh, this mod is very suited to my playstyle. <laughs> hand feeding hell or hand feeding heaven, depending on what side you are on. <laughs> But let's keep a little bit of coal so we can drive around. Alright, so we are not really under threat of attack anymore. We can quite calmly research the things we need. Do we have already 400 military signs? Not quite yet. I can use that warp teleport to just quickly come back whenever I need though. I think that does it. That's all the military signs. Yeah. This is the consequence of not making the extra belt, but as you can see, there is absolutely no space for an extra belt in this uh, in this mess. So you'll have to forgive me while I fill your screen with tiny white letters. Oh, I, third for I can see how much I produced overall. 410 military science specs have been produced. So that should be enough to get those two technologies done. If I distribute all of this. Alright. Just a little bit of revealing around here. I think it's time to take the car. 20B. Uh, one sec. Alright. 
Uh, yeah, we're gonna be taking the car, driving out. So there's two things we could do. I just saved, right? Yeah, I just saved after the radars. So there's two things we could do. First thing we could do is actually just drive around the base in circles. Uh, and taking out any nearby biter nests because they are going to very they are going to be very very tiny because this is a dwarf planet. You're like a giant to the creatures of this planet and to its natural resources, which means basically the resources are very very poor, but the biter bases as well they are going to be a lot sparser. And if you take out all the nearby ones, it can take a while before attacks come in. The trade-off is though, it takes a lot of time to take out all those biters, and by that time the, you can, it is really hard to keep up with the expansion of the pollution cloud. So I think we are just going to ignore that and just go for resources and loot just something straight away. Though I may do like one tiny loop around here just to see what's around. So yeah, let's, let's go for that. Yeah, I'm not mining anything just yet because the copper patch is under here and the iron patch is uh, like inside the cliff, so it's a little bit. I guess I could place it, but let's go. Uh, let's go out and explore. So yeah, this is a casual run, not a speed run. Um, we don't really need to be mining all the time or do things as optimized as possible. Right here is some water that is interesting to know. Let's see what kind of loot we can find, right? I can stash my inventory in the car. And just see whatever I can get. So red ammo, copper wire. Yeah, let's let's do ex let's do explore around a little. Anyway, as for now we have been mining resources faster than we were able to spend them really. There should be a nest close by somewhere here. Here are so many cliffs man. Okay here is a super super tiny nest. Okay I guess we'll just... Let's put this red ammo in here. Alright. So that's a tiny nest taken out. Those were already sending biters over, so yeah, we can just delay the attacks a little bit. Here is an iron patch already. I may just set up the iron patch. Mining productivity is still going. Okay, this is not really working, is it? If I am going to be doing this. Uh, right harvester. Pretty soon we're going to have the upgrades and I'm not expecting large attacks here, so... Just a couple turrets for now. It is nice to not have to place those extra belts all the time though. Okay, this is... Fueled. I just want to check uh, the factory floor real quick. Now everything is going as it should. Chests are empty. These chests not quite yet. How much science is in here? 500. Uh, about equal. Alright, so these are going to require again 200 extra red signs. So I guess I will compensate for that. Since the science count is now nice and equal-ish. Let's, uh, let's keep it balanced. Alright. Back out. The platforms are going to grow in size significantly now. And then we can be done with all those silly inserter business and underground belt business which I forgot to set up again. Alright. Let's keep exploring. Yeah, if you want to do that uh, kill all nearby biters thing, you should do that as soon as possible, not like this. You should really hurry up with that. 
to keep up with the pollution cloud and the evolution factor because uh, once you cross into medium biters it gets harder to take out um, biter nests. Right, we're just gonna take mental notes of what we find. Steam engines, some gears and iron. Nothing too interesting just yet. We are finding a lot of ore patches though for a dwarf planet. Tiny ones, but still. Radars uh, will integrate the radar on the... On the final design. I did not hook up my water pump, did I? Let's chop our way through the forest. I think I'm not going to do a full exploration loop. Or did I already do it, actually? I think I already did it. Yeah, okay, let's, let's explore this and then we'll just drive out. See if there's some nearby biter base here which we can take out. Okay, we even have tiny oil. Okay, this is water. Probably really, really poor. We yeah, have almost minimum. It's not, not uh, worth the time to try to extract, but we should be making some pump jacks for uh, later. But I don't have steel. Okay, we're driving out now. Okay, red chips, man. Here is what we were looking for. 37 as well. We haven't even researched modules just yet. Alright, here's another biter base. Another loot chest. Yeah, the spawning is really random. They, they can really bunch up. And they can... You cannot just find one for ages, if you're unlucky. Alright, that is enough for the modules, which I need. Now just another 23 and I can make the modular armor as well. Once we research it. Okay, so we have the red chips. So it makes sense to go for modules next. Efficiency module. And the warp beacon. Though I think I now have chests of stuff on the space where the warp beacon spawns. So let us not do that just yet. Of course, there is a giant ocean here which forces me back down another loot chest on the another loot chest holy moly all right so you can find ammo in big quantities and that also applies to red ammo so it pays off to do this before doing military science if you have the chance More storage tanks, we can use those for oil and not too far from now. Now we just want to find, uh, I guess, an iron and a copper patch. So they are, they are going to be tiny, but they are still going to be large enough to place the platform on. Can take a while to find those. So here this copper patch, it's plenty large enough. For our platform. Uh, left platform. Okay, this one is already expanded. You can see the platform is way, way bigger now. So that is nice. We can get rid of those inserters. We don't really need to. But the inserters consume a tiny, tiny bit of power. 20 kilowatts when they swing. So we don't need to do that. The bells work for free. And now this tile is on the platform. So yeah, pretty easy as well to... Um, to change over. Let me remember how I did this again. Yeah, I think something like that. Like this. Also this miner can go and we can place it here now. We have a normal 8-8 distribution. And we can now easily walk out of here without this miner blocking our way. Okay, we're gonna need more gun turrets though. 
if we want to do the same for the other for the other mining platform it is also possible to find gun turrets in loot chests by the way so perhaps we'll get lucky now let's just go handcraft a bunch while we drive around Right, so this belt is not connected. It's now four tiles longer. And that's because this has also moved four tiles. So as you can see, if we would move this, let's uh, save that I can demonstrate that. 20 C. If I now move this platform inside, the gun turret will basically spawn on this edge. Right. Okay, these were not placed yet, but they should be placed here. And here, another one of these uh, warp pipes will spawn later, like this. So that's why there's only three gun turrets on this line. And it connects exactly here. So remember that it extends by four tiles for the first upgrade. If you take that into account, it won't despawn half of, or like, an edge of your smelting setup. And uh, basically, you have to basically move the whole in build to reset it up. That can be quite annoying in Warptorio. That happened a lot in the first playthrough. Also with the upgrade of the platform, this hallway becomes one tile wider on both sides. We had we didn't have this space before. And if you if we look on the right side, this one is still smaller. Did we not research the other one just yet? Oh right. When I retract it, it will grow in size now. And the hallway will also grow in size, so pay attention. This, this loader will spawn uh, in front of here. And this will probably despawn, I would imagine. Ah no, it stays. Ah, it stays because it... No, it was... I don't know. It was on the platform maybe, I don't know. But now this hallway is larger as well, so... It won't actually grow until you place it or retract it. The existing one won't change shape. Yeah, I should do it from the outside. I, that's why I made the save. Because I cannot demonstrate it from the inside and then go back out. Right, so this thing is now fully set up. I have the three gun turrets. It's a dwarf planet. It does not mean we don't get attacked though, because even on a dwarf planet, those can be quite uh, sizable. Yeah, I kept two raiders on my on my platform. That was not the intention. All right. So we did manage. Look at that pollution cloud. We did manage to explore around a little bit. Actually, I could just leave them here. Let's just leave them here. Uh, I did hook up water, so that is good. That means these tanks should be pretty full. Yeah, 800k already. Coal is full, water is filling. These have plenty of coal as well, so we are free to keep driving around. God from which side I came, I think it's this one. So once we find a good iron patch, we will use the, the this teleporter to get back home, pick up the iron platform from inside, and come back through the teleporter to put it where it should be. Uh, I want to place a raider on here as well, since now we have good coal income and we have uh, good water, we can afford to place the raider. We can still squeak through here, so that doesn't block our path. But it will give us vision on these biters. And it's quite handy to be able to see your remote operations remotely, so to say. Okay, so the further we go away from spawn, the better the contents of the loot chest. I mean, the higher number of stuff which is in there. Okay, iron. Well, that, that's uh, nice. 
I guess the biters are still coming. I'm I'm too lazy to shoot myself. Alright, so now we do need more space for the platforms though, so that is the only negative aspect. I do still have one in my inventory, but I cannot I cannot place it. You can only place one per world, or it, it just won't place and you will lose it from your inventory. Uh, okay, let's do place like a couple gunters here, just in case something attracts a biter. Uh, we can go pick up the iron platform from inside after we pick up the turrets. Looks like I should pick up the northern turrets first. Alright. Let me collect those four bells. Oh. <laughs> this is no longer needed. Uh, I should have placed this miner first. Because I cannot place it indoors. You can only place it on ore. Okay, we're gonna need it. I, I have a ton of turrets. Okay, that's good. Uh, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 18, and 12, 30. Alright. So now I go back. Let me check this. Okay, let me clear the space for that war beacon. That's not too bad, only that one. Alright, now we can research war beacon. The first two levels, I think, at least. And then we can basically have efficiency modules for the entirety of our factory. So I'll make two modules of each kind with those chips we found. If we find 23 more chips, we can make the modular armor, which I'll research next. And that basically allows you to get a, take advantage of the, red, the things which require just a little bit of red chips before you set up the entire oil thing. Alright, so military science is done. Oh, I have to restart the uh, science production actually. Yeah, I think we'll do that first before um, heading back outside to set up the miner. Right, so theoretically, we just grab the prepared resources again, and we can do the same trick. So you really don't need to do that, it that often. In my playthrough, I just need to do it more often because I basically want to keep this chest full all the time. But here it's okay to let everything just run out and just fill it chest by chest. And you need to do this. Like half minute sequence, you basically do this once every hour and a half or so, and it will just run. So it's really not uh, not that bad if you just set it up right with the right chest limits and stuff. All right, we can use these two speed modules in this copper wire assembler, and that will make it so that this thing is now working almost all the time. So. This thing has now plus 40% crafting speed. Ideally, we need we would need 1.5, but 1.4 will do the trick. This guy is now fast enough to keep up with these nine green science assemblers. So these inserters, they are going to start backing up on the belt because this thing now outspeeds the green science assemblers. So we no longer need these copper wire uh, things to, to assist the green chips. All right. Now it is time to. Um, I need to head back out through my this teleporter over here. 
and then we can set up the iron. Right harvester is gonna be big. Can we walk through it? Yeah, we can. Right. Missing miner. With the underground belts. And then everything is looking normal. Finally. <laughs> I do like the, this trick though with the long handed inserters. It uh, works really well. Right. Oh, yeah, gun turrets. Because I'm definitely gonna get attacks over here. Let's just copy this. Then I just can minimize my amount of sinking. Okay, so not too much ammo in here just yet. It's dangerous, but I think we'll be alright. Only 16 minutes left on this warp zone. If we don't research that... Um, I may forgo that bridge technology for now. I think we'll probably be upgrading... We'll be probably do be doing one more round of... Military science before before building the real base. So I made 200 extra science packs. I can use that to research rocketry and level four of this project. Yeah, I think we will do that. And let's hurry up with that a little too. Mm, 500 science packs, I don't know. This is a fast technology, only 20 seconds per science pack, so... We don't have any stashed away science at the moment, so let's... Uh, yeah, let's... Modular armor, we don't need just yet. Let's go first for this guy. And this guy through these prerequisites, like this. And then we have 20 minutes extra on this world, which is useful, because this is a dwarf planet. And it will take a while before the pressure is going to mount up that much that we cannot afford to stay on the planet anymore. There's just not enough biter nests to spawn biters. So it doesn't matter how heavily you pollute these two nests, uh, there's, a, there's a spawn limit on how many biters per minute can spawn. Like every six seconds or so, let's say. And it is just all the biters that can spawn. One every six seconds or something. It goes up and down with evolution, but... Yeah, you get you get the point, right? There is just uh, Even if there's like... Even if like 20 biters per second should be sent to the attack. If they physically cannot spawn that many biters, they physically cannot send that many biters to attack. And the attack groups are just tiny, basically. So yeah, not a lot of pressure until until we get into big biters, because if they can spawn big biters every six seconds, then the equation changes a lot. All right. So what will we do? We just have fat signs. We have water. We have coal, copper, iron. Science is going. We have the war beacon, let's insert one efficiency module already. So that means power usage just went down from about 5.8 megawatts to 4.5 and will go down even further. So we are using less we are using less water, less coal to feed the factory, which is good, that means we can spend spend more time mining iron and copper. The other thing we could do is we could go speed module in here or, or productivity. Not really. It's all cheap. It's all cheap stuff still. So 
not really convinced that's the right way to go. Inserts are indeed being produced faster than they are being consumed. Same for the iron gears, just barely. It's just barely, but it is happening. It is backing up. Yeah, we don't have a stash just yet, so we can continue with the slow technologies before we research the faster second level of war beacon. It is also pretty fast, but it's just the way it is. Right, enough blabbering. That means we can leave the factory unattended for a while. And we can basically go hunting for loot chests. Or... Fill these. Yeah, I think after this we're gonna have so much copper we won't need to mine copper for a long long time. I want to produce a lot of ammo so I can so I can easily fill my gun turrets on the platforms later on. Just keep, keep forgetting where I should go. Right, all chests, maximum full. Let's delete the chest limit for now. Make everything into ammo. Ah. Still we have chests full of iron, let's just... Let's just get rid of everything. Actually, probably should fill the next bunch up in there first. Alright, a little bit more. Okay, that way we are sure that we can start off another batch of science. Yeah, this thing is definitely in the way, man. We can start up another batch of science for sure. Alright, that is all of the iron distributed. We have literal... Tons of steel, not really, actually not that many, that much steel. Right. Steam engines can be of later use. Cool, so good. Okay, let's go out. I want to find 30 more red chips. Before I do anything else. Time to collect some oil, not just yet. This uh, source is really poor. It's like absolutely poor and we don't have space on the platform just yet to functionally... I guess we could, we could store some oil but no, this is just too poor to set up. Can I finally make my 10 pump jacks though I can? Alright. Okay, we're getting attacks here. Alright. On the quest for... If I find a good stone patch, I will set up some stone brick smelting as well. For the next batch of military signs. Alright, we're already in big worm territory. Those guys are dangerous, so we should not mess with uh, with that just yet. Now it's basically the matter of trying to reveal as many chunks as possible, so we can spot as many loot chests and ore patches as possible. <laughs> I guess thanks for the follow, I thought it was a loot chest. 
Ooh, double loot chest, uh, but they are pretty close to these uh, guys. Right here is 10 gun turrets. I do want to try to pick that up. I knew it. Everybody was just waiting for the follow. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna grab that, that's too high a risk. I am gonna grab that. I cannot help myself. Yikes! <laughs> Alright, 28 minutes remaining. We did it. We do have this annoying waterfront now. Blocking our way. We are going to get far into Big Biter territory now though. Note that we are already in at 35% evolution and we are not at all not at all under a lot of pressure yet. It's just there are medium biters, there are spitters, but they are just not there in high enough quantities to worry about. I think something is to be said to increase the flow rate of the planetary teleporter even more. We have now 2 megawatts, which is good, but still not great. Once it's up to 20 megawatts, we can use it for basically everything that we want. Alright, more loot. I see a stone patch there. Chemical plants, that's also nice. Those things are decently expensive as well. We're gonna set up our planetary teleporter here. I mean, yeah tiny patch but still 282k of stone you're not gonna mine that up in a single warp zone so it's quite nice that the biters are so um, oh yeah this teleporter spawns back to the platform so it's good I'm not back at the factory when I complete this technology or I would have been left behind. Alright, let's... Let's repurpose those for now. Alright, steel smelting can resume later. I'm going to have to pick up 12 stacks of coal as well. I do have half stacks of coal. Probably enough for the rest of this warp zone, actually. So I don't really need additional... Oh, I got 10 gun turrets, right? From one warp chest. I don't really need additional... What was I going to say? We can do this instead. It blocks the logistics, but power will still work. Oh, I forgot again what I was going to say. I don't need what? I don't need something. The logistics from this, we don't need it. We can still use it as the teleporter. We do need set up gun turrets here though. That's probably the worst way to set up gun turrets possible. Since any splash damage will also damage my chests. Yet another raider here. Yeah, research, actually, good. If you place a small platform too close to the cliff, the bigger platform will now have a cliff on it that you cannot get rid of. <laughs> that is actually quite funny. Actually, it's not quite funny. So the worms predictive shots, they predict your movement, but they still cannot exceed their maximum range. So if you are, if you, the predicted movement is outside the range, they will still fire in the predicted movement but if the maximum range is here it will only go to here so yeah they cannot shoot further than um,
They cannot shoot further than their maximum range in any case. Okay, this is decent. I do have a radar now. Let's set it up as well. Okay, we did get damaged. Perhaps I'm... Perhaps I'm underestimating the damage these guys can do since I'm still happily setting up new mines over here. That may be a mistake. It would be nice to be able to, to mine the stone bricks I need though. I'm still gonna pretend everything is fine. I am gonna make a safety save though. I'm just gonna pretend everything is fine. Yet another stone patch. I do want to find my red chips if I can. Okay, I thought somebody trolled me again, but a raider has actually discovered a loot chest, I think. Yeah, up down here. In the water, no red chips inside. Only have a split second to look at it. There are red chips inside here. Will it be more than 23? Yes! <laughs> Alright, that's everything we need. Basically, it's everything we need. It would be nice to find more red belts and stuff, but none of those things are essential. We can now make the modular armor. Once we research it, right? Research. Um. Let's get the move. I don't know. Let's uh, first get the beacon and then re-evaluate. Let's throw away the heavy armor somewhere on the ground. Maybe celebrating a little bit prematurely right we don't have anything else to do outside we're just gonna go back to the base to keep an eye on things because while we don't need to deconstruct the war platform uh, or the the miners anymore these will just war back including gun turrets and everything we don't need to pick up anything outside anymore we do need to pick up this stuff over here Alright, 1200 bricks. It's actually not that many. I can just carry that. Alright, I've only produced 7 repair packs so far. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That's a hundred repair packs. Yeah, I think it is, it is time to get out of here. Actually. Alright, we also... Can we still do this? Uh, we need the upgraded war platform as well. Yeah, there is just only so many things we can do in a short time. We are stashing up signs again though, so we are producing faster than we are researching. So perhaps it makes sense to upgrade the size of the floor as well. That allows us to make uh, 40 laps in here. Then we still can go flamethrower. And then the war platform upgrades because we need more space. Concrete we need as well. Something like this. I think it's gonna look. I think red ammo is too expensive because most of our opposition is still gonna be um, small biters. We, we, actually we could one shot small biters with red ammo. But small spitters, we're already one-shotting with yellow ammo. And we are far outclassing the armor of the medium biter now. It has 4 armor, doing 11 damage. And how farther you outclass the armor, how less big the difference becomes. In, I don't... What am I trying to say is... Um, yellow ammo is just more cost-effective if... 
unless the armor value of the biter is really close by your damage value. Uh, yellow ammo is always going to be more cost effective. I think I want to get my first big biter kill on this planet and then we'll warp out. At 50% big biters will start to spawn. Yes, these are the 20 minutes extra we just researched. We would have been warping out now if we hadn't researched those upgrades, but we cannot stay that much longer. It doesn't look like it. Some of the attack groups are quite sizable. I guess we are polluting sizable nests somewhere in the fog of war. I'm not gonna pick up any more loot chests, so let's explore the current size of the pollution cloud. Yeah, that's quite large. We are polluting some sizable nests over here, which are probably the main... Um, look at that biter parting. They need to part all the way around this lake, through the forest, all these cliffs. That's horrible for UPS. Yeah, there's like many parties on the way simultaneously. And they are starting to get big. I think I need to go pick up my stone already, unfortunately. Yeah. Not really great. How much stone breaks do I have? Um, 400 uh, military science wheel. I can research that one technology I want. It's not enough to research actual more damage upgrades though for the... Um, for the gun turrets, we need uh, like in the order of magnitude of 300 military science per upgrade now. 300, 350, 400, yeah, a lot. Right. It does not take that much time to deconstruct this. Maybe I can just hold on just a little longer. The production is not the issue now. Basically, we are consuming 100 magazines a minute, so like slightly over half a belt of iron consumption a minute so here we don't have an economic reason to warp out here we again have definitely a military reason for having to warp out right big biters have started to spawn it will take a while before they're actually here though okay let's take off these radars for now Place one. Holy moly, did you actually donate $75, Super Mario? I thought I had set up some sound for that as well. I didn't I didn't hear anything. So sorry I missed it, but uh, holy moly, man. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. It's a fake donation. Ah, oh, yeah, you can just type that in chat in italic. <laughs> oh, you got me. <laughs> That's funny. Let me check. I, I do have that set up, I think. I, I cannot really test it right now. You see, this is fake as well. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, so... Okay, I should, I should get a message if somebody does... I don't think I even set it up yet, actually. <laughs> Hosting with 327 viewers. 1700. Yeah, yeah. Wishful thinking, man. Why not? <laughs> Alright. Been following since four minutes ago. Alright. Um, back to the game. Big biter. I missed it. 
Oh, here he is. I missed it. Alright, let's check the next big biter then. Let's see if we can spot one coming in. I want to see how long it takes to kill a big biter. Here's a big spitter. Those guys are not that dangerous. They do a lot of damage, but they die fairly fast. But the big biters are very, very dangerous. And they will grow to... Not just a single big biter. Here is one. They will grow to a significant amount pretty fast. Once the evolution uh, goes up. And it goes up very fast. Oh, yeah. That takes a long time to kill one. Okay, we need to get out. It is time. It is definitely time to get out. Uh... Panic, panic, panic is setting in. My inventory is probably too full. Claim the miners. Claim this thing. All of this. Hopefully the platform does not get blown up while I'm away. It is getting damaged. I should research more warp axe if I'm going to do this kind of... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, let's just make walls. Uh. Uh. Wait. Did someone try to troll me with an alert sound and then actually some stuff got destroyed? <laughs> Jinxed it. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Alright, um, save. Uh, Z. Stress is setting in. We'll press the war button now. Did I forget anything? I'm not going to reclaim that pump. It's way too dangerous out there. Those big spitters can one-shot me. I'll just leave that. Big bites, man, they are quite painful. Okay, we're all warping out in a few seconds. I hope I didn't forget anything important. Alright, this is a rest world. That is bad. Well, it's not bad, but it's boring. Since this uh, is basically an island. This is basically an island and uh, yeah, no biters, no resources, no nothing. So we could like fix up our base a little bit and stuff, do stuff, but that's going to be boring. So let's, um, let's load. We've had enough uh, easy worlds already. This Boy! Rip headphone users like myself. No. Well, well. We'll uh, do the designing and the rebuilding of the platform while the attacks roll in. That looks that will be a lot more fun. I've I've had it with the easy worlds. Uh, this was supposed to be full challenge, and we already got lucky quite a bit, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, you can get some weird sound spikes when you like go from map zoom to um, to not map zoom. All right, just another random rare world. I don't know actually if we can already get those difficult type of worlds. I don't know exactly from what warp zone they start to spawn. I remember I looked it up for the video, but I already forgot all those numbers again. Alright. So... We should have enough science packs for flamethrower. Okay, need it later, need it later. Second. Alright, so... Currently using 5 megawatts of power here. Now we're using 2.5 megawatts because this warp beacon covers everything. It covers the entire factory. 
So, and it has a distribution efficiency of one. So basically it is as if this one has two efficiency modules inside, this one has two inside, this one has two inside, this one has... All the machines have two efficiency modules inside because this distributes with 100% efficiency to every single machine in its range. So this thing is... This thing is the goat of Warptorio, man. This thing is the most single most important, single most powerful thing in all of Warptorio. And the fun thing is, this thing goes up to level 10. You can unlock 10 module slots. I will talk about it in detail in my next video, about how, how powerful this thing actually is, but... Yeah, for now, two efficiency modules in every single uh, assembler. Um, we are out of science, so I don't really need to set up the labs first. We can first go set up mining. I think... This is all full again. Let's, uh, let's refill the assemblers, because they are about to run out. Yeah, you can stay a while mining, but if you are defending your platform, then you still need to uh, deal with the attacks. And as soon as big biters come in, at this stage of the game, it's still pretty... They are too strong, man. My, my turrets don't do enough damage. If you type slash me has donated anything, it will send. <laughs> I wish I could donate. I think I did not set up that yet. Uh, I'll try to get it set up for before the next stream, because of course, I appreciate donations. For now, if you really want to, you can go to my YouTube channel where you should probably find a link to PayPal somewhere under my video. But yeah, that's like a four-step process to get there. So yeah, <laughs> I should make it easy, right? That's my job to do that, I guess. Um, yeah, the new defense plan. It's probably what's in the cards uh, next. Right, so it is not perfectly balanced, but we'll just refill everything and call it a day. We don't need perfectly... perfectly... sync... Perfect, perfect amount of science. Man, I cannot speak. Alright, we'll... Set it up again one, once we're back. I think we will now just drive out. Okay, so the war platform size is going to upgrade. I'll try to catch that on camera. I have a radar set up, so we should be able to look back on here. Channel points. I have... I actually, I don't have a clue yet what channel points are. It looks like we are kind of stuck. Okay, there's a loot chest on the water, which we cannot grab without landfill. It has three steel chests in it, so we're not going to worry about it too much. Oh, highlighted message can be done with channel points. I don't know. The thing is, I, I spent most of the time uh, working on my YouTube videos, so I don't really spend enough time to... Uh, I don't really spend enough time on... Uh, I don't really have enough time left over to set up and research into this Twitch stuff. Until I... So until I start to do it like really seriously, I... It's just going to be a little bit... Crappyishly amateur stuff. Uh. I 
should we set up one on cool already? That's the question. Yeah, it just uh, it is just uh, like a low stress. It's a fun, it's a fun side project. Cause I don't want to get burned out on uh, video editing alone. So this is actually a lot more fun than video editing. <laughs> also a lot lesser effort, but oh yeah. A nice bonus for people who want to watch more stuff. Because yeah, my YouTube videos is like uh, half an hour per week on most weeks, not even all weeks. Yeah, I think we can just go double iron here. Okay, that one in my inventory was still the small size preview, so I wanted to get that out of the way a bit. It's a bit hard to not get stuck in this. This should not despawn any gun turrets, hopefully. Alright, okay, that's perfect. Warp tour you is low stress. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, guys. Warp tour you is not hard. What is hard about warp tour you is keeping in mind to remembering to push this button in time and get your stuff deconstructed in time if you lose track of the time it's going to be hard because you get destroyed but you have a free get out of problem button right here and you just need to press it <laughs> that being said yeah if you the thing is once you're busy especially downstairs once you're busy doing stuff you can easily lose track of time, lose track of evolution, and suddenly turrets are empty and everything goes to heck. And uh, yeah, then you need to spend three more minutes deconstructing stuff and then things go wrong real fast. So yeah, I, I know about this too, it happens to me as well. <laughs> so I should say Warptorio is... Theoretically, Warptorio is not hard, but in practice, it can be quite different. Alright. Uh, yeah, I did this side already. Let's put back the coal. Oh no. Uh, is everything still going right? Looks like. Okay. I got this. Uh, computer is uh, thinking about something really hard. Uh, mouse over thing. Ah. Which worried me a little bit that something was going to crash, but so far so good. I want to bring. 12 stacks of coal with me if I can so I can set up more stone mining if I encounter a patch Alright, we start to get some biters here Okay, what, what, what do I say? Encounter a stone patch Right Where's my inventory again? <laughs> yeah, yeah like stress free, right? Everything is under control my, I, I'm just all over the place all the time Warp tour you is easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see how easy it is, Mr. Hendrix. <laughs> Alright. So let's set up just 12 miners again. Same setup like last time. It is time for bots, man. Bots and blueprints. It would be funny, right? Talking about how easy Warptorio is and then just getting absolutely destroyed by a large big biter attack right at that very moment. I still have that uh, superheated nuclear reactor on the platform. So everything is gonna blow up instantly. I guess by now it's just a gimmick though. By this time. Since if they manage to blow up the nuclear reactor they probably already have destroyed absolutely everything. I did not find any big power lines just yet. 
interesting. I'm not even gonna spend my uh, teleporter for this. This time we set up the gun turrets one tile away from the chest so they don't blow up the chest with splash damage if spitters attack later on. Alright, have a good chance of getting some decent mining time in on this planet I would say. Because... We are probably, we probably can manage to. This is, this is, it will be under radar vision. We probably can manage to start another batch of military signs so we can up the damage on our turrets. Actually, I, I missed the moment. We can get the next moment. On camera still, we have a bigger platform now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the 600% uh, that world was a nice flex, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, let's get rid of those irons. Uh, let me just clean up my inventory a bit. I think we're just gonna go all steel chests from now on. Uh, we can make... Make one more underground to get rid of the belt. Pipes. Stone bricks. Ah, the modular armor. I'm running around without armor already. I don't know how long. My red chips. Military signs. Somehow. The walls. I guess we can put walls here as well. Right, that's an extra inventory space as well. Alright. So now we can grab our pipes and engines. Uh, iron gears, I probably need some more iron gears. We can start making the flamethrowers out here. I hope that it won't despawn my... Um, my assemblers here on the edge. Flamethrowers. Alright. So I just uh, insert everything and click it out again. I found this to be the fastest way to quickly produce a bunch of stuff. Now we just wait for this one to finish. Right, they didn't despawn, that's good. That's a lot of space. Yeah, maybe we don't need the damage upgrade just yet if we get flamethrowers in the mix now. I think I'll make 16 for now. That is half my engines. And it gives us four flamethrowers per corner. Came out of steel. Okay. Uh, two more. Eighty engines left over, so we can make sixteen more flamethrowers if we need. Already running out of chest space here. Well, I guess this is necessary now.
Alright, so we're also gonna need a ton more of gun turrets, so... We're gonna need a bunch load of inserters as well. Okay, I have 16 flamethrowers now. I don't have oil just yet. Did I find some oil? Yeah, I did find some oil. I never got this loot chest. It has 17 red ammo, which is something, but not a lot. Right, this is the maximum size upgrade we can get before blue signs. So we're going to design our defense around the size of this platform. Uh, you're gonna need a bunch of iron gears to make a bunch of gun turrets. These gun turrets keep me nice and safe. Mm. Alright, yeah, research, right. Uh, I have not been researching for a while. Okay, what else has priority? Okay, we don't have that many red and green tags left over still. I guess we should... So, one thing that threw me off on my first playthrough is these technologies. First of all, they're hidden behind gates, which you normally don't quickly research early on. And it says, warps in a small castle turret to the one of the corners. Which sounds almost like, is it like a, a free turret, which like defends your your factory or something, but it is not. It is just a, a new teleporter which will spawn in and it is not defended at all. But you also don't need to defend it. The biters, the biters cannot use your teleporter, so that's alright. But what is way, way more important is uh, these four technologies, they spawn four turrets on the outside, but they also spawn huge hallways around your warp factory floor, which gives you so much more space to to build it's just uh, incredible like this is a tiny a tiny square we're gonna get a huge outline of hallways it's gonna be like 10 hallways something li like this basically but no they're gonna be bigger than this i think actually but they're gonna be on all sides and all the way around so that is uh, hugely powerful so let's go for that next we'll go We'll do gates. If I can find it. And then we'll do all four of those um, turrets. 40 second technologies. Let's do plop down those slabs then. Or at least 10 of them. Ah, it takes barely any time to do this, so let's just do it. Uh, I think this will fit like this as well. So we'll just use a big one. I'm out of wooden power lines. Okay, I'll try to be down here when that happens. For now I need iron for my gun turrets. And copper as well. <laughs> Bye. Alright, I guess we'll do gun turrets first. Right, that's gonna be 80 or so gun turrets.
All right. Technology is about to come in. So let's see what happens here. That is a lot of space to work with, isn't it? It's gonna happen on all four sides. Yeah, that is really a lot of space to work with. That, sh that could have been advertised a little bit uh, better. <laughs> that uh, this was uh, such a powerful technology. <laughs> Right, more iron. I'm gonna need more... More gun turrets. Those have already finished. We're gonna need a boatload of inserters, I guess. Let's just right. So we do get those things on top of here as well. There's these like extra teleporters you can bring in extra resources and stuff. But I find it's quite hard to defend it. They don't have the ideal shape. They are located outside of your platform. It's not easy to actually defend those entrances, at least not until much later on. So I tend to just ignore them, but of course for the space on your factory floor it's quite nice to have those. So I think we are about ready to start setting up for flamethrowers. Um, yeah, I think I don't need even more gears. Alright, we are... Is, please tell me, is the... Is the sound of the turrets, is it too loud? Because it is quite loud, isn't it? Or is, uh, is the balance okay? Because for normal Factorio this balance, which I usually use, is okay. But I know from editing the turrets can be quite loud and I usually tone them down quite a bit. I can live with it, it's quite fine, 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 alright. Okay, I'm worrying too much then. It must be that loud. <laughs> Yeah, the sound really changes a lot when you zoom in and zoom out, which is, again, quite annoying for video editing. <laughs> because I want to balance the sound out a lot better than how it is naturally recorded. Alright, we'll see how well I can... Okay, three of the four are complete, the next one is about to complete as well. Let's just watch that. Alright, that is uh, complete. Now these things are still quite skinny. That is where I, this last technology is going to come in. This increases the size of the warp factory bridges, which makes all these hallways uh, one tile wider. It's a red-green technology with a little bit of military science. So I want to get this before I start designing the entire factory and then have to redesign it again because I'm not using the space efficiently. So basically I'm going to research this, then we're going to set up a factory which can go all the way up to blue signs and then we'll see from there. That is the plan going forward. But even further we are going to want to set up the green signs is quite a bit behind. Perhaps we can just... Hmm. Sneak in some extra green signs like this. We are in the just tack it on phase now, I would say, in the playthrough. Can even do one more over here. So the thing is, we have barely any green signs. 
but a lot of red signs now. I think most of the technologies which require two reds and one green are done. So I, I'm going to want to upgrade um, green science production just a little. Let's let's get warp reach. I hate to research this technology because well, it gives you extra reach, but you get used to that pretty quickly. And then once you don't have it anymore and some other playthrough, it just messes you up all the time. But I guess let's just get it. Um, we can... I think we should uh, work on getting the rest of the floor upgrades we can. We'll upgrade everything to the maximum level before we redesign everything. Just keep that stuff efficient. I want to get this in there, I want to get the extra movement speed in there. So yeah, that, that will keep things going. Alright. That will work. Three extra science assemblers. Now we have 12 of them. Now this thing will need to work all the time. I guess we will assist it with some copper wire again. I have a bunch of that copper wire, which is basically in the way anyway. Alright. So I think I'm going to redesign this at the start of the next warp zone. It's getting a bit too hectic here. I probably should uh, be picking up my stone bricks actually. And also organize this here a little bit. Because it's a giant mess. But first, yeah, let's first go pick up stone bricks. I probably have quite a lot of stone bricks already. Okay, let's put walls in here as well. Alright, so I'm making a... Then I have made 400 walls again. Just for my own reference. Right, this is when Warp Toryu starts to get hard, right? <laughs> now I have... Chests full of this stone brick stuff. And I need to spend a lot of time deconstructing it or I need to leave it behind if I would get into serious trouble right now. I basically would not have a... A uh, different option than just to leave this stuff behind or risk getting annihilated. Alright. It's actually not that much. It takes uh, a lot of stone to make stone bricks and to make walls. But it's definitely more than we need to do all the things we want to do before we have the actual base. We can basically make enough military science to research this technology to increase the floor size and I think we can even afford some uh, flamethrower damage upgrades, maybe two levels and maybe even some uh, warp platform. Because with flamethrowers it's... you don't need... okay we'll get to that later, we'll get to that once we have flamethrowers. But there's also some, some interesting damage specific stuff going on there. Right. Away all stuff. Let's try to grab all copper. Uh, something like that. Okay, we can fill these chests again. Uh, inventory management, not the most sexy stuff, but it also has to happen. This is a lot of chests, man. Okay, just uh, putting down a couple more. There's four chests full of copper.
All right. Five. Okay, five and a half chests of copper we still have. Okay, let's get rid of those for now. This is also f filled up. Yeah, I, I, we are still basically taking in resources way faster than we are spending them. I have eight full chests of iron up here. We are getting damaged now. The first sign of damage is the first sign you need to get out of there. Okay, we don't have any steel smelting going on just yet, so let's reclaim that as well. It is almost time to refill those chests again. Okay, so let's do that. That is all iron. Alright, it is really starting to get time to get out of here, it seems. Let's go take a look what happened. Is it up here? It is up here. Okay, we just cannot deal with this. Okay, I'll make a save. In case I have to warp out faster than this. I just want to check the production. Yeah, actually 2.25 a minute, that's exactly a full belt of iron. Okay, so what do we do? We need to pick up the stone mining operation. And we need to leave behind our inventory for that. Just in case, I want to have maximum inventory space. Now I don't have a single point of ammo on me, so that is also not great. I guess, uh, let's make a blueprint of this. In case I want to use it again. I don't think so though. I think we have enough stone until we can actually sort of automatically mine stone. So the warp teleporter. No, actually no. The warp teleporter doesn't support a platform. So we still will have to set this up by hand until we have bots after blue signs. Okay, not the greatest haul of... Uh, we're getting... Biters and coming here. Okay, I think we can still manage to escape. Must I absolutely take every single last power pole? I guess I must. Okay, we're getting demolished again. Okay, so I'm not going to to take those. They they will spawn back by themselves. Could already push the button, but I like to be here. He's got destroyed. So yeah, that's the difference with the dwarf planet and uh, this planet. This planet, basically, way, way more biters per minute attack you in way larger groups. And they basically able to demolish your base a lot uh, earlier in the evolution curve. Whereas last time you got all the way to 50% big biters. Uh, it's 15 minutes earlier on this warp zone. So let's push the warp button. I, I guess, uh, I don't know if stone mine, uh, stone furnace would be fast enough with the... Uh, with 11 levels of mining productivity bonus. Man, we're getting absolutely destroyed in this corner. <laughs> Those made it on the platform. The other ones got left behind in the old world. Alright, you land with a loud metal clang. The sparkle in the ground fills you with determination. That means we are on an iron planet. That means we have very rich iron patches and very poor and sparse other patches. So is that a good thing? Well, it depends what you need. <laughs> what do I need at the moment? I have no idea. I think I have everything I need. I have enough copper. I have loads of iron. I guess coal is the next thing which could be... Look at the size of this thing now, man. 
cool is the next thing which uh, should get upgraded perhaps we could do something like this for coal and two more of these as well I just deleted a bunch of water which I did not need to delete but oh well so yeah coal would be nice but I guess uh, this is an iron planet so we're gonna be building iron I could, uh, I could set up the platforms on the home patches though. They are tiny, but they will, can get us started with some resources. So, um, I should pick up the platforms. I don't have them in my inventory anymore. Where is my inventory anyway? That's a good question. I right, have two full chests of stone bricks. That's a good amount of stone bricks. Way too much stuff on me though. Okay, we have like 175 gun turrets. That is good. Uh, let's pick up two pieces of each of these. Yeah, we need oil. You're right, we need oil. That is bad because oil, like on the dwarf planet, oil is going to be small and poor again. So it's pretty hard to get a decent amount. Alright, we got some damage in on these even. Okay, so now I picked up two of each. So the next time uh, they will warp, I will warp out. I will have placed those, but I will still have one of each left in my inventory. Um, yeah, looks like we are again gonna be filling up these chests all right something like that that keeps science going okay we're not that far behind on green science anymore okay warp striders i guess we're just gonna get everything now it does not really matter what order anymore. I do want to upgrade the... Uh, there's some expensive technologies to get still. There's War Platform Logistics, which upgrades the belt speed to red belts and this to iron chests. And then there's also uh, the dual loader, which adds an additional belt. So we have, we'll have two belts and two pipes on this thing. So that will despawn my assemblers here. So I will need to deconstruct those before I do that. I need to check out all my floors if nothing is about to despawn. So... I guess we'll wait a bit on that one. Uh, let's just get tool belt. This extra tool belt. Uh, we can upgrade the harvester floor size as well. That needs stack inserters. I guess we also want... I don't know what we want. <laughs> now let's just unlock blue signs on the way. Alright. The, the idea was to be able to upgrade this platform while the biter attacks were still small. Already wasted almost 4 minutes here. The left harvester goes on the coal. Still all miners are active, so even though it's a tiny patch, 50k, we are going to be mining a lot of it. I have so much copper already. I think I'm going to put it on copper anyway. Oh, it's the right one though. I would prefer to place both on coal, but alright. Let's put this one on iron for now. So yeah, we have basically upgraded to one-click placements now, which is a huge um, improvement over the early game. Alright, I'm gonna put a couple extra raiders on here. Basically one in every corner, just to 
speed up a little bit of scanning. I want to have a little bit of view around me. For no specific reason, I guess. <laughs> Alright, we're missing a gun turret here as well. And two gun turrets there. Okay, we absolutely we got absolutely vandalized. Okay, it's starting. Alright, so uh I guess let's put walls on here. Uh, flamethrowers and yeah let's start designing I guess so I think I want to have a three wide gap in my gun turret so the the middle the centers of the of these uh, edges are not under such heavy attack most attacks are pressuring the corner which is the hardest to defend so we can afford to have a gap in the turrets and I like this tree wide gap I have right now. So I'm going to start with turrets here. We want a wall on the outside. Somehow this is just like rudimentary. I guess we should start designing the corner first. The thing is, do I want to have double gun turrets or single? I think I will design to have double gun turrets. Like so. But I will start off with single gun turrets. So the corner structure is going to be the same. I, I like to round off my corner instead of having it like this. Because this is really easy for spitters to destroy. Without uh, uh, without much opposition. But if you have more of a, a rounded corner. Um, a lot of more gun turrets will be within range of all the biters. So we are going to try to round off the corner a bit. So, I guess something like this, I guess this could theoretically work, uh, that could insert like so, we could use long handed to insert like so, we upgrade this to blue one, because this now is feeding three different turrets through this turret, that's actually a rounded of corner pretty nicely. That's not too bad. Alright, then the wall around it. Something like, like this. But I like to have the wall follow close. So we just keep one tile of space around off the wall as well. That prevents splash damage from hitting the gun turrets. But it also uh, will take a lot longer for the biters to actually reach the walls to start breaking them. So it's, it's a good thing to keep the walls close by as well. Until we get explosive biters, which have an area of effect attack that is. But we don't have those in vanilla. Right, so this is going to be the edge of the design. So let's rotate it over to this side. Alright, looks like we'll have to choose. It will either be a one, one tile gap, which I don't really like. Or it will be a five tile gap, which may be a bit much. Alternatively, we could just bring the whole, the whole platform in one tile. I think I will do that. So I'll just bring in the whole platform one tile from the edge. Like so. Then we can close the wall. Except the three center tiles. That will be a gate. And the turrets will reach exactly to the edge. Like so. And we have this nice walkway. On each side. This can remain like this, and I guess this can be like this. I 
and then just some power lines I think this is gonna be the design okay maybe not I have I have flamethrowers I kind of forgot about those <laughs> Yeah, so I want the flamethrowers to have more range than the gun turrets. They do have more range than the gun turrets. They have uh, this kind of range. Uh, a gun turret. Let's see. Can I stand here safely? This is the range of a gun turret. And this is the range of that same flamethrower. It's not really that visible. About 10 more range. The question is... If I place my flamethrowers behind the line of gun turrets, like so, and gun turrets are here at the front. Which turrets reaches further? Gun turret reaches to here. Right? That's the edge of the gun turrets range. The flamethrower actually reaches a lot further still, all the way up to here. It's quite hard to see, I imagine, because of the very light overview. Yeah. Okay, gun turret to here, flamethrower to here from behind the belt. So, I guess we can do that. We can put the flamethrowers behind the ammo belt. Because the flamethrowers are not going to be as powerful as in Vanilla Factorio. Because of the... Well, they cannot fire everywhere at the same time. And they don't do the DPS to kill the biters before they reach the walls. Not just yet, at least. So I think I think we'll just uh, first try to upgrade to this kind of setup. With a little bit of luck, I can just rotate that around. Like so. Right. Then we're going to have a lot of gun turrets, a lot of inserters. We have all that stuff. Maybe need a bunch more belts. And then we are going to put a splitter here. Temporarily. We'll first supply this belt with a bunch of ammo. Before we start placing the turrets. We still should have plenty of cover from our uh, existing turrets for a while. Alright, not bad. I guess we'll just start placing this line. I think I'll hold off on placing the second line just yet. Oh, right, we still need to do the power pull. And. Does this reach? This does reach. We need one over here. I guess like that. So one in between here. That's a bit finicky. I think that is a regular pattern, which I'm making now. Right. So, those are already fed. Now we just go around. Around and around. Well, that means I need a certain number of walls. I need to make 12 gates as well. Uh, probably a couple hundred walls. Let's grab them now. And that, that ought to be enough. Okay, coal is still flowing, but we need to add chests to there as well. Let's just add the tree the three steel chests we have, so at least it will keep flowing at full speed. And first get the design outside done. 
All right, this is already finished as well. Let's get warp X speed so I can deconstruct faster. Apparently that still will be a thing. And then what's next? I guess we could get solar energy so we can get the portable solar panel for the personal armor, personal battery. We can get... Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, not really a lot yet. We can make energy shields, but I don't have the science for that just yet. Let's just unlock it. I think we'll just unlock all red-green technology before we upgrade to the next level of science. Right, so this is going to be the first time we have a walled base. And the next step of safety will have been achieved. I think we'll just go for the full... The doubled gun terrace. We'll just, we'll just build it out completely. That should allow us to survive even big biters pretty soon. We do need a bit of upgrades on the damage. We have 11... 11 damage against 8 armor from Big Biter, so they need like 120 bullets of firepower. Okay, we found a loot chest somewhere in the water. Red belts, eh, it's in the water. Okay, that is that part done. Let's do output priority to the right. Let's uh, build the walls first. So we give the... We give the ammo a bit of time to go over the belts and the gun turrets to fill up. We can then spot errors, like that this inserter has not been placed. Finally, the gates. Alright, now we have gates. We can get in and out, but the biters hopefully cannot. I guess we could even... ...make some light. Especially now it's getting night. Well, I got carried away in designing this thing. I forgot to claim oil. That's alright. We don't need oil just yet. That nuclear reactor is looking very ominous. Exactly not lit up by all the surrounding sea of light. It looks a little bit strange. Yeah, it only took us seven and a half hours of playtime before we had our first walled base on the platform. Let's just go full... Man, okay, that got me. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the bits. No more bullets in the chest. Oh, you're wasting all the fun, man. <laughs> that would have been a funny thing to find out later. When it was almost too late. Alright. Yeah, so this works fast. These can grab fast. I think we need a full belt of ammo though. Not just uh, like one side of it. Key logistics signs. Oh yeah, I guess the chests indeed are empty. We have a lot, of, a lot of ammo. Now we have like 160 turrets, 
with each at least 10 ammo inside. Usually more because the inserters pick up more than one at a time. So there's 1600 magazines stored inside the gun turrets. Alright, so now we can get rid of the inner loop. I think I still want to keep these for... Yeah, I have I have a bunch of magazines. I guess let's just... Let's just do that. We'll put all the ammo in there manually. We will have to rebuild these. It's probably not a good idea to deconstruct my automatic ammo distribution right as about as we are running out of ammo. Okay, we got enough of the world explored. Okay, let's also... No more small power lines. Alright, that is starting to look like a base. We can even do things like make the power lines look symmetric on here now. How are the platforms doing actually? Uh, coal is out of ammo. Okay, I will retract the platforms for now. I don't have time to micromanage this as well, and we do not really need these resources just at this very moment. I just, what I need is a whole bunch of ammo, basically. That is what I need. So let's quickly go down and set up some... I mean, we have literal tons of space in here now. That's not right. The quite the right usage of the world, literal, I guess. But oh well. Stupid amount of ammo. Just to have some ammo in uh, in reserve when things inevitably go wrong if I continue on this path like this. Okay, that's probably... No, our power generation actually still is okay. Man, there's just so much to do. It is... There's just too much to do, man. Alright, I'll grab another stash of iron. More technologies finished. I'm not ready to micromanage the uh, expansion of these central things over here, so let's keep on researching other less relevant technologies for now. Like the whole railway sequence thing. Uh, whatever. Alright. Okay, that's a good deal of ammo. Let's put that in here before these belts are empty. Alright, I did deconstruct my stuff. I can warp out at any moment if the need arises. Now we can take down the inner circle, so to say. Oh, that warp X speed is actually pretty noticeable. Actually, I haven't been taking water for quite a while. 
336k. Okay, we still have we still have water. No need to worry just yet. Next warp zone. Okay, grab more iron. More ammo. We've been sev spending severe amounts of ammo on the last warp zones. So we need a little bit overcompensation. Alright, so that is almost 2k of ammo. Plus whatever is in these gun turrets that is coming back out. Now we got some space on the central square and we can start setting up the flamethrower configuration. I like to have my tanks in the corner. And I guess it's gonna be like this. Because then the flamethrower can connect to it like so. This easily covers the corner. This line is the corner here. So if I do this, both of these overlap both of these overlap this corner pretty strongly. So I want that, that on every side. And the question is, that will cost me 8 flamethrowers, so I have 8 more. Where do I want those? I think I want some distance between. Maybe just 2 tiles. That will increase the chance that this... That this flamethrower will target something else than this flamethrower. But it still can help out, apparently. It is still... Is it, is it still? Yeah, it's still barely touching that corner, so... It probably should fire on corner biters like these as well. Yeah, it wants to. Yeah, it does seem like they want to react to the attacks from the corner. So I think I'm just gonna start out with this configuration. And that should be good enough to do this, right? And that is 100,000 units of oil stored on the platform. Pretty fun to have, uh, funny to have all these flamethrowers wanting to shoot. Yeah, they're reacting all at the same time, so that's good. They are all f triggering all on those guys. Yeah, I think this is a decent setup. Trains in Warptorio. There's a good reason you don't see trains in Warptorio, where you warp to a different world every. Uh, so many seconds. Also, I'm not really a trains guy normally, but I do have I do have plans for a train in my uh, for the finale of the Warptorio YouTube series. There's gonna be a train, probably not the train you are expecting, but there's gonna be a train. The reason for this train is probably going to be the most stupid reason for a train you have ever you could ever imagine. All right. So I think we won't get oil this warp zone. I do not really want to leave this behind. I could get oil. I have doubled gun turrets now, like double the DPS on the corners. This is a better shape than what we had before. It's just going to be. Uh, I didn't explore out anywhere on this world actually. So yeah, no, we're not we're not gonna get oil here. It doesn't make any sense. But we're gonna get it through this warp teleporter thingy. So we probably actually we should build back the ammo assemblers. I guess we could still place them in the corner. Like so. We can 
have a supply chest like so. The, the, problem is if, the problem is if we do it like this, we don't have a buffer chest of ammo anymore, which could be kind of dangerous. So what other options do we have? I guess we could do this. Feeding it in. Feeding it out and putting it on the belt like so. That also does not look too bad. No, it does it, it does not look nice. I think this just looks nice. It's not really that functional, but it looks nice. So since this is a casual playthrough, we're going for not functional but looks nice. And gets me into trouble. Most likely. It also means I can just hook up oil to either of these sides and pump it in. For now I'll reverse the direction of these pumps. Oh yeah, that looks nice. So we can enjoy the moment the flamethrowers turn on once we start uh, harvesting some oil. I could make a buffer chest in a different way. Or perhaps I'll just set up an alarm with the circuit network to warn me if uh, these chests are out of iron. We'll see. For now we just want to get the basic system set up. Okay, we still have plenty of ammo. Right, that is starting to look quite nice. Right, so biters are also triggering on these um, these castle turrets, but most of them will find their way to the platform after they cannot attack this castle turret. Right, so we are at 34% evolution now with just gun turrets still, but because now we have doubled gun turrets, um, we can last a lot longer here. The problem though is of course with doubled gun turrets we're also going to have a potentially a lot higher spending before we get into problems. So far not so bad, we are still below a yellow belt of iron. The problem of course is we are not mining any iron at this point. Yeah we're easily mowing, mowing down these uh, medium biters now, they don't get that close to the wall even. Somebody did get a single shot in here though. So we're definitely still not invulnerable. But we're getting somewhere. I think we should basically we should warp out because we're just wasting iron on this planet now. We're not mining and just <laughs> admiring the view. Okay, I, I did just save. Let's just do a test. Um, I'll speed up the game. Or as far as I can. And see how long it takes for me to die. It's gonna take a while actually. Looks like we're only running at like three times speed. Yeah, 200 UPS, so it's like 3.3 times speed. And it will slow down once we get more biters. Alright, I will read chat for a bit. How about that? We can then see if, if I die while I re-chat. <laughs> Use the buffer at the top to inverse the side of the... Yeah, I think I'm going to do something like that. Either that or set up a warning if 
the ammo assemblers are out of iron. Because there still will be ammo on the belt, there still will be 1600 ammo in the turrets, so I will have some time to react. Because if I do a buffer chest, I will have to make a, an asymmetry in my build, which is very, very bad, of course. That's not Feng Shui at all. The stupidest train I can think of is that of a train wall. Uh, okay, I'm going to... The train I'm going to use is... I'm going to produce something on the factory floor, which needs to be transported to the boiler floor. But I just cannot... I just cannot do it. So what I do is I transport it up to the war platform instead. Pick it up by a train, drive it out uh, a couple kilometers to a mining platform. Then it gets in on the harvester floor and is transported through the harvester floor <laughs> to the boiler floor. That is my stupid train for the final end game. It's just more of an afterthought. I didn't design it in the original design. So uh, that is why that train has such a stupid function. But that is probably the most stupid train you have ever heard of. <laughs> Okay, we are basically running out of ammo. So we are, we are going to die because we run out of ammo. Um, so the question is, should I prolong this? I think I will. Okay, we set up these infinity chests and then we'll play on. I think it takes too long. Uh, it takes too long. The turrets were already too empty. The belt is not fast enough. Alright, yeah, this is not really representative of anything basically anymore. Let's just wait until they blow up this thing, which should be within a couple minutes now. Or like a couple seconds. Okay, all of the gun turrets are basically down. Almost all of them. The nuclear reactor is not a military target. This would be a horrible moment to cheer with bits, by the way. This is not a military target, so they will prioritize the gun turrets first. No collateral damage may soon start to happen. Yeah, here they go. They're gonna blow it up. Actually, the walls actually survived. That's funny. Alright, now let's check if I actually did save or... I did save, right? Or was it my imagination? <laughs> Alright, I did save. I forgot to read... Forgot to read chat. Warp trains. What's the worst that could happen? Eventually we get water inside the boiler floor which means we don't need to pump water from outside anymore let's actually warp out more techs cliff explosives yeah why not yeah we are done basically military techs here this is all the red and green tech which is still left this costs 10,000 red signs this is the triple loader for the third belt that we are going to do a lot later uh, this we're not going to research at all, for reasons I'll explain in due time. Uh, we can get more stack size on the inserters, I guess. That uh, does not really make sense. I think we're out of text to research. Basically, it's only the platform logistics which is left to do. 
Uh, for that I need to do some rebuilding and re-micromanaging. This world reminds us of home. Again, not really an interesting world type. But it should have oil, which is important. Because that means we can get the flamethrowers going, which is what we want. Alright. I will, however, um, take off this stuff. Actually, these are fine. This is not fine. I should. This is gonna pop out, I think. Yeah, let's let's take down grenades. All right, now I disconnected everything. So this is safe, this is safe, um, this is gonna spawn out here, and it's gonna have this orientation after it moves, so what I want to do is basically this, then this will stay connected after it expands, same for here, I just built all these iron chests, that is annoying. Alright, we'll just have to move this manually. How is the water? We still have water. Okay, we still have water. I think we can build a whole bunch more of these. Let's start making some. Also for oil, we will need a bunch of these. A whole lot of those. Okay, so this won't despawn anything either and here this will automatically pop out here so this will remain connected nothing should despawn i think we are good to research those upgrades then and here this is area is clear as well Let's accept that because this is gonna pop out one tile as well all right so the dual loader 1,000 signs of each, pretty expensive. And then the war platform logistics, which is not that expensive. This technology is fairly fast, there's only 10 seconds of science pack. Do we have? Okay, we are out of... Spent too much time on the top of the platform. Okay, now I want to delete this chest. Uh, inventory management! I want to delete that chest and I want to start doing this kind of stuff. Uh, this and this one and this one. So this is the last time. This is the final time we need to fill all these chests. Because after this we have researched all that is to research. All that there is to research for red and green tech. So a resource inventorization. You still have like six chests of iron as well. So yeah, this is the last red and green tax. Unfortunately, I don't have it stashed up, so that's gonna be quite slow. Despite despite uh, the technology being only 10 seconds per science pack. Right here, we have more ammo. I guess we can take this down as well. Alright, I'm gonna take this opportunity to... fill a normal amount of ammo in these gun turrets around here. 
let's take out everything. No more Z inputs. Just half stacks. And then we'll take out two times half stacks and that should leave us with 25 ammo per gun turret. And this method for filling works pretty well if you have a lot of ammo on you. Same for this side. Okay, we don't need that gun turret anymore at all actually, because now we have the gun turrets fixed on the platform. Ah! <laughs> Don't forget to power up the war beacon on the factory floor or it won't work. Yeah, that's a good point. Did I disconnect that? I probably did. Uh, I think I still have those in my inventory. Could have picked it up anyway since I'm running all this distance. This turret we can reclaim. Okay. Here's my inventory. Probably should place down, place back these guys. Smelt some more steel, grab some more coal. All this upkeep stuff which we need to do. And all we really want to do is switch on the flamethrowers. <laughs> Alright, so I took all the ammo. I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1200 ammo left. That's going to be enough for the time being. I think it is time to start finding some oil. I don't have any raiders on here just yet. I'll just place one. Let's place it down there. Um, right. I am good to go, right? Probably should have at least a little bit of coal. I can just quickly finish this build. I think we should be mining coal. Coal and iron probably. If we can. Okay, then I need two more boilers. Two more. I have the steam engines, I think. Two steam engines. Two boilers. And two of these burner inserters. Let me find the way back to the basement. And these tanks. Alright. That is everything for here. Once we start taking in water, which I probably should do now. All right. All right. Right, that should do it for at least 
the initial bit. Let's hook up some water. And pray it stays connected. We have a good place to hook up water as well. Okay, that should keep it connected. We're gonna have a problem doing this once we have flamethrowers though, because those are gonna burn my water income. Probably forgot the pump again, six worlds ago. Alright, so that's gonna pump water for a while. Then this water level should be rising again. It is not, so something is wrong. Ah yeah, this is not connected. Okay, we need to come back here to... hook this up manually, because... we need to rotate these pumps in the correct orientation after this technology completes. Uh, that will take long enough to fill up. It is time to head out. Already again, 10 minutes are gone on this warp zone. I want to find oil. Looks like we may be best off going in this direction. Fortunately, fortunately it is night, so you won't see, you won't see anything. Alright. So I'm going to call it once we have a beautiful flaming action for this uh, stream. I didn't think it would take me that long to set up some flamethrowers, man. <laughs> but it did. Now we have these green wires in the loot table, so the chance to find good stuff is, uh, has become smaller now. We okay, found another loot chest. I just crashed into it. Three gun turrets, alright. <laughs> okay, I see iron. Is that far enough though? I don't think so. I want to go out a bit further. I just would I don't want any I don't want a lot of biters basically. Alright, more steam engines. I could have used those. Just a second ago. And a bit of red bells. We can definitely use those red bells. Man, there's a lot of loot chests here. We can definitely use those red bells for the new base, as well as these underground ones. Ammo, assemblers, all good stuff. Okay, let's see if we can get not distracted by loot chests for a couple moments. Hey, uranium, we haven't seen that for a while. Just a sec, I'll be right back. Right, I'm back. So yeah, basically we are looking for iron, coal and oil and not copper. <laughs> I'm a very focused kind of guy. Factorio is a kind of a game which uh, sucks you in like that, isn't it? What I... I just, uh, for the duration of my stream, I don't have a fixed s streaming schedule. Hey, more copper, which we don't need. And look at that giant copper patch, 16 million. Oh, that's going to be a challenge. I think I can sneak in through the forest. It has landfill, this chest, so that's good. 
oh come on loot chests just i just want to find my resources and get on with it and put the flamethrowers out there the duration of my stream is never really fixed it's just uh, how how long i think the next goal i have in mind is going to take me sometimes it's four hours sometimes it's eight hours this time i thought it would be uh, like five but uh, it's gonna be a little bit more apparently okay here is some iron this is definitely distant enough it is even free of biters Okay, now the grenades come in handy because the platform is quite sizable. We can just quickly clear that out. Okay, right harvester goes on here. Indeed, I still had them in my inventory. This is now properly defended with 25 bullets. 25 magazines per miner. So now we're just out for coal and oil. And biters. Oh, big. Big worms already. So the further out we go, also the the more frequent the nests are. And the better the loot chest, except this one. Nice though. <laughs> but the, yeah, the biter bases get uh, more frequent and bigger as well. So the chance that an ore patch is available for use if you find it is lower as well if you are out further so we don't want to go out too far we keep finding huge copper patches the game is just mocking us at this point oh thanks uh chevron for the subscription yeah man it's going well with the factorio video production thing Okay, I think I see oil. I do. It's kind of annoying though. I would have rather had coal first at this point. And annoying cliffs around here. We just hook it up a little. It doesn't need to be beautiful. As long as it works. Right, then we use that warp teleporter. Uh, put that in here. Alright, we started producing oil. To keep oil producing, I will just hook up it, some tanks over here. Ah, uh, all my ammo is at home probably we are not going to attract giant amounts of bite retention from this angle we are very far away it's only like eight pump jacks or so i missed one i think i'm not gonna hook that patch up it's too far away okay that Covers this quite nicely. Do I have a radar on me? I do. Okay, it is pretty covered in by biters here. No luck at all finding a coal patch wherever. Can try to squeeze through. Over here somewhere. More oil, of course. Now the only thing we need is coal. If you don't find coal, I'll just put it on iron. Alright, that means probably water got disconnected. Yeah, alright. There is just not uh, too much direct since it's drive here too. Everywhere is either forests or biters or lakes, so 
kind of stuck here. Let's head back home and reconnect the water. We should now have two pipes. Oh, <laughs> man, that sound. The volume of that sound is exactly right, man. It really sounds like it's in-game. Alright. I forgot ammo production and the beacon. Ah, yeah. You are right. Oh, that uh, saves quite a bit. Um... Yeah, let's uh, let's let's input at least a little bit of iron into ammo production. All right, that should be decent enough. Where can I search for coal? I could go out from the mining platform over there. Did I grab my car? I did. I want to have both of my platforms set up before I... Before I end the stream or I just will forget about it again. Not really nice to... Cut off... With such a... On such an unsatisfying moment. So much forests. All right, give me an iron patch. Uh, sorry, give me a coal patch. We find more uranium than coal. What is going on, man? Lots of biters everywhere. Quite sizable nests already. Coal. Yes, we did it. And this one needs quite a bit of clearing. Alright. And immediately another loot chest. 200 red... Okay, we have to pick up that one. 200 red bells is just too good of an opportunity to pass up, and there was also some undergrounds in there. Yet another one, what's going on? Or oh, did somebody just follow? <laughs> man, I really am messing myself up, man, with these sounds for the different <laughs> interactions. Okay, so... We're gonna... This pollution is never gonna reach here and before we need to warp out. So this is only going to have fair pollution attacks. So while the biters may grow in size, we are gonna be safe enough. I don't know why I had to chop the tree. It, it had damage. <laughs> Alright. These are fueled. This is built. I forgot to do fix the water though okay now it's going up again right yeah now we are pumping all right the moment has come the moment this stream has been about <laughs> we're gonna turn on the flamethrowers and see how much of a dent it makes on our ammo production War Platform Logistics 2. Is there anything else which we want? We don't have anything available except in server stack size. This one which we actively do not want, which I'll explain in a future stream when it matters. And this one which just requires 10,000 red science packs, which is going to be a dedicated effort. The rest is all military science. We still need to make some military science manually. We need to research this thing. And let's actually put it in the queue. So I don't forget about it. Possibly I want to make some more science to do the... Because it will take quite a while to, to develop an actual base. So I may just 
sneak my way into these military upgrades as well just to get the maximum bang out of the uh, damage here so that we can withstand the big biters and we can remain longer on the planet um yeah i should save 23 z i am going to switch on the f not, not yet i want to speed up the game a bit because now it's exactly medium biter time so I just want to progress evolution a bit further until the attacks start become severe. Because we're only spending like 60 magazines now a minute. That should go up pretty fast. Spitters are gonna mix in right now. It's gonna take them a little while to come over here. And I will just switch on the flamethrowers again at the beginning of the next stream, man. That is how it's gonna go. Milk the climactic moment for all that it's <laughs> that it's worth. It does basically just not seem that we are. Maybe not that many biter bases are in here. Or there is some weird parting issue going on. Yeah, this is like a very bottlenecky bottleneck here. Right, we are getting significant attacks from this side though. Actually, they are finding their way through, it seems. Alright. Okay, it is night. It is night, so that's a good moment to turn on the flamethrowers. Um, let's see, magazines. 220 a minute, yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Medium biters. Uh, really push that uh, up with a sharp spike every time. It's like small biter, small biter, medium biter. There again, small, 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 medium. It just spikes up. Now we switch on the flamethrowers and see what happens. First we just connect this. Rotate this pump. Right? Yeah, I think so. Here we go. <sighs> nice. Man, that feels rewarding. Alright, 8 hours and 15 minutes to flamethrowers. That's about as crazy as it gets, I get. Uh, as it gets, I guess. That is pretty sweet. Speed up till that. I think that is going to be again once ammo starts running out because the, the flamethrowers they they do a lot of damage. Look, we are down to a hundred. We basically cut ammo spendage in half already, while it should have been going up. So now look at the ammo usage spike. It's medium medium biters, and it should have kept going up, but instead it's going down. And we are back at about a hundred magazines. The fire is doing a lot of damage. So we want one upgrade to the fire damage for a specific reason. If you look at the damage, if you look at the damage output on the right, you see all the way in the bottom it creates one times fire, 13 damage per second. That is the ground fire which remains here, which means. 13 damage does not insta kill the small biters but if we get one fire damage upgrade we get 20% bonus on the damage twice but let's say 20% that pushes this damage this 13 damage it pushes it up to at least 15.6 damage which does insta kill small biters so that is good because it will basically kill them upon contact and doesn't allow the gun turrets to fire on the biters but if you look at this the flamethrowers are a bit laggy so these are basically all going to be destroyed by gun turrets 
and only the next group that comes in is gonna walk through the fire. So we are kind of counting on getting as many biter groups to come in as possible. So they all die in the fire created by the previous attack. So this fire is now going to last a while. These guys are smartly avoiding it somehow. These are going right through the fire. Yeah, lot, lots and lots of damage is now being done by the fire. Of course, these, these, the flamethrowers can be very strong, but these are not upgraded at all. So let's just let's just let's just imagine we had some upgrades on the flamethrower. Then you will see they basically insta insta die. Let's say we have both military upgrades, and then we well, let's just stay in editor mode. Ah no, we cannot. I have too much mess in my okay where is the ground fire i cannot see the effect of the ground fire anymore ah. uh, interface minimap where is minimap show minimap there is a mod that automatically hides that, actually. So now we do 13 plus 12.48 damage on the ground fire, which is way more effective in, uh, in killing these biters. If we slow down time, you can see the small spitters, they instantly died upon contact. Let's see once the next group, the next sizable group, please. Any volunteers? Yeah, there, there we are. Okay, we have, don't have a lot of fire over there. Alright, this will do, this will do. So, slow down the game. You can basically see... These small biters are basically dying upon contact. See, they die upon contact with the fire. They don't even get, the uh, like... The, the health bar, it doesn't go down, it just goes from full health to dead in a single contact and that is what we want for these flamethrowers that is what's going to save most of the ammo so we still need a couple upgrades but the beginning is there alright so I will not save, I made the last save before switching on the flamethrowers um, this is it for this stream I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to uh, leave this. Uh, I'm just going to leave this up um, and see if I get destroyed or at what point I get. I I did give myself those unfair advantage technologies though, so that's bad. All right, then we'll just speed it up. Not that much actually. Looks like it is nearing its limit. We're just gonna die once we already actually don't have any more ammo in the chest. So yeah, again, this is not representative for anything. Let's just watch the night. Let's just go out with the night view of the flamethrowers and then we'll call it a day. I hope to see you in the next stream, probably again next week Sunday, uh, around 12 o'clock Central European time. I'll put it in the planning as soon as I know for sure. And hopefully... We can uh, redesign the factory and get up to blue signs in that one. That is the imaginary goal I have in mind. <laughs> we'll see. It may turn out a lot harder than I think it is. I remember I spent a lot of time trying to design the blue signs factory for my YouTube series because uh, yeah, space is very limited. It is not a big square. You have this hallways to deal with. You don't have bots yet. It's quite difficult to fit everything in in a decent way but optimal while well, optimally making use of the war beacon so yeah we'll see we'll see how far we get in the next one so this was it for this one thanks everybody for watching thanks for the uh thanks for giving me heart attacks with the bits donations with the destroy sound and uh, 
for everybody who subscribed and uh, thanks uh, SDB Red 13 for the gifted subscriptions early on the stream. Um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one, guys, guys and girls and whatever. Being politically, politically correct. Politically. <laughs> I need to learn English, man. <laughs> Alright, don't start this now. I am about to end the stream. Thanks for the gifted subs. 4700. <laughs> the Crastorio tag. Ah, I have the Crastorio tag on the screen. Yeah, that's right. I, I did update ab the, the title and stuff, but not the... Yeah, right. Oh, well, the vote should be uh, available immediately after I end the stream. I think that's how it works. So, five and a half hours of catching up to do. You can skip over the boring -ish parts. That's the advantage of watching the votes. All right, the base is starting to die. Not going to give the bites the gratification of blowing up my nuclear plant yet another time. I will do that myself. Right. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching and all the rest. I said it already and I will see you next time. Thank you.